Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Clap. Was it last time that we all three had like a clap war? When was that? Because we did a podcast where you said, give me a clap, and I clap, but then you clapped, and then I clapped, and then you clapped. I don't think it was me. And then I clapped again. Was it me? I think, oh, it, was, I think, I think it, was. it was. Yeah, it was, it was, just like, it was in the beginning when I was, was just. It was just a stuff. bunch of clap, and I just, I just, I, I always have to have the last clap, so I don't <laughs> care. I don't care if you clap or you, and you did it one time where, yeah, where you clap, clapped, and then I, mean, I yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's my show. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Savage Saturdays here on the Drinking Bros Podcast. We are on episode number 16. I'm your host, Derek Whita, the man who claps last. <laughs> claps last. Claps last. Um, joining me, as always, it's Owen. It's Owen. And back with us today for round two, our good friend, Brandon Allen. DP. DP. <laughs> here we go. Hey, that that's actually, yeah. Um, so, uh, Brandon's back. Um, we. Yes. We uh, uh, had him on the show, episode 14. Yeah. So if you haven't listened to episode 14, go back, start there. Um, Brandon has been a friend of mine in Vegas here for the last four years. We talked about his really um, triumphant powerlifting career. Yep. Um, he's been my powerlifting coach. Um, a lot of cool stories. So if you haven't already listened to episode 14, go back, listen to episode 14. It's long. Three it's hours. good. It's like, like who, <laughs> like who's dick in this room? Whose dick in this room is long and good? Nobody's. Yeah, but that ours, podcast no. is. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. but um, yeah. So check out episode fourteen. Um, it was a lot of fun. It's a long one, but uh, we got a lot of good feedback on that. We kind of sampled a, a longer interview. Yeah. And it was just you have so many cool stories. Um, but I did get a message. You left out part of one of your stories an and I, I just like, I just want to like, we're, we're going to get to the slapper and other things and stuff like that. But I have, I just, I just need, um, can I ask you a question? Sure. <laughs> Did you poop your pants at the LA fit expo? Yes. <laughs> you, you, what, so I was, I was told to ask you about pooping your pants at the LA fit expo. Which time, right? Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, uh, I've definitely had an issue with pooping myself as an adult. And I think a lot of it has to do with <laughs> my lifestyle choices of force feeding, um, and lifting really heavy fucking weights. So yeah. when you do those kind of things, you're going to have a couple slip ups. Right. And, uh, so just to go ahead and dive in, then my beautiful wife had a message you and you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, to cover. Hey, I didn't. Message. I wasn't going to rat her out. I'd right. be like, so one of your biggest fans, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who was well, on cleanup that day. That's definitely like, her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're like they're they're volunteering for the powerlifting meet. They're like, I didn't volunteer for this. <laughs> just like, uh, uh, hey, this is powerlifting. Yeah. Right, this is minimum uh, wage. I'm getting paid yeah. to white pass. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. So uh, that was a funny story. We we're. For those that know, the LA Fit Expo is a huge event. I've been going to it since I was like 15 years old. Love it. It's moved all around, but it's typically in LA. And um, they have a big powerlifting meet there. It's the American Cup run by the USPA. It uh, used to be like a pro invitational. It was kind of the big dog. It's pretty excited to do that every year. It's turned into more of uh, a qualifying meet. But again, it's still a great meet. I do it. I like to do it whenever I can, whenever I'm healthy. So we go down there. I stay at my dad's house when we're in LA, which is in Orange County. And which is about a half hour drive to the LA Convention Center. So, mind you, before meet, pretty miserable, on a ton of drugs, not sleeping, not eating good food, just force feeding, whatever the fuck you can get yeah. down, type of shit. In the morning of the meet, we wake up, and you know, just like every morning before a meet, my stomach's in knots. I don't want to do it. I'm trying to make every excuse. Are to you go a, home. Are you a nervous shitter on competition day? I'm a huge nervous oh, pooper. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah totally. like four. If you know, if 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 my and my if my first event is at eight, I got to get up at five just to, to get all the poops, to get all done? The poops out. Yeah, it's just like a ner- I'm just yeah. I'm a nervous pooper. Right. No. Yeah. See, so the event <laughs> yeah. starts at ten, or I'm sorry, at, oh, at ten. Yes, you. The doors open at eight, and you know. I'm similar to you. If, if it opens at eight, I'm going to be there at seven 30. First one to walk in. So yeah, we get up early five o'clock or so. And, uh, we eat, we go to the IHOP to eat every time before I meet. It's just the thing. I go to IHOP and get a country fried steak and just force feed as much as I can get extra potatoes, the whole nine. So we're silver driving to LA. It's bumper to bumper traffic. Right. And, uh, my, I, I got to piss like bad. Like I'm li- like, I'm fucking, I've been holding it, you know, and I can't hold it any longer. So I'm like, babe, I got to fucking pee. We got to get off. So I get off the freeway. 
I shoot down, you know, some off ramp and I get into like a residential area. I felt like that was a good place to pee. Yeah, this is where this is where I'm going. Right. Like, yeah, get, there is, was no more happening. waiting. Yeah. Right. I was gonna either pee my, my singlet, because yeah. uh, you know, I'm wearing a singlet, which is, it, those that don't know, it's like a wrestling suit, a single piece singlet. So we pull over, I rip my singlet down, I pull my little pecker out, and I'm peeing. I'm like, oh. And then, you know, I feel a little rumble in the belly, and I think it's just going to be a nice little fluffy poop, yeah. or a little fart that's going to yeah. slip out. And I, yep. and I'm like, oh. Nugs. I look at Jenny. I'm like, I just shit my pants. <laughs> and she's like, no, you didn't. I was like, Jenny, I just shit my fucking pants. She's like, <laughs> yes, I did, Jenny. Yeah. Hey, you don't understand. I'm, I got I'm, fucking stuck, Jenny. <laughs> that was my that was my favorite um, when uh, the the other in in part one of this interview oh, when plane. you were talking about being in the airplane <laughs> and you're just so matter of fact like because then it was just your perfect voice. Jenny's like, what what happened, babe? I got fucking stuck, Jenny. <laughs> I got fucking stuck, Jenny. <laughs> I fucking pooped my pants, Jenny. Yeah. That's why. That's what's going on right now. Okay. That's exactly yeah. exactly it. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, uh, I think I'm going to let out a little fart and boom, I shit my pants as I'm standing on the side of the road, holding my little pecker peeing. And I'm like, Jenny, you, you got to drive. I don't think she understands that I'm serious at this point. She thinks I'm fucking with her. I'm like, Jenny, get out of the fucking truck. You got to drive. I'm serious. Like, you got to drive me to a gas station. I got to clean myself up. So I waddle over to the other side of the truck. Cause I don't <laughs> cover in shit. And you're, you're in your singlet. In you're my singlet. Come- panties yeah. filled up. And this is the first yeah. year that they make it to where you have to wear, um, like uh, tidy whities underwear. Like you used to be able to wear boxer shorts, like I, like you know champion boxer yeah. shorts. But too many people would cheat and wear single ply briefs, and yeah. then, which looks like boxer shorts. Mm-hmm. So they made a new rule that you had to wear tidy whities. So what's, wear, what's the advantage of different? Dude, un- it's fuck. This is so. This is annoying in powerlifting. So for me, I only always wear silkies, right? Because it works with um, my balls and my prosthetic leg. Yep. You know. So, but so, but they they're not allowed in USP. You can either go. You can only go free ball. Or tidy whities because no people shit. like so these supportive underwears and things like that. And I even heard a story about a guy like wearing like leggings but having fucking bands underneath and shit like that. The extent to which people will go to cheat yeah. to to come in fucking eighth place at a regional meet. Right. Is insane. You know, well, to, like, to answer your question, um, why would underwear make a difference? I, you know. Yeah. So we were, when I'm saying briefs, um, they're like it's like a have like it's it's a very it's like jeans like denim but stronger okay material that you put on it's very hard to get on takes multiple people to help you and then it compresses you know on your legs which is giving you support god um, it, it makes it harder to squat to depth which so when you get to depth it's going to support you and try to bring you out of the hole better got it so it's just the way that people cheat and yep. it, there's an actual category for this it's called single ply or multiply to where they can wear these suits and where it's legal which if you want to compete so by all means. Yeah. But don't enter a raw competition wearing single ply or multi ply gear. That's so, cheating. So when you say raw, it means like without all those Correct. types of things. Correct. And then there's two categories of raw as well. There's raw and then classic raw, which classic raw is wearing knee wraps and then raw is a sleeve or no knee wraps. I compete in both. Yep. Um, I'm a big fan of raw. I don't like wearing wraps, but all the big competitions I've done are in wraps just because that's where the big money is. And that's where the big, the eyes are on those big meets. Cause you want to see a thousand pound squat or a 950 pound squat. And, right? and like, the wraps, the wraps help a little bit, but they're mostly there. You definitely want to use them for protection, right? They protect so you or no? They, they were originally designed for protection. It was like a more of like an ace bandage type thing that you wrapped around your knees and it gives you a little spring out of the hole, but very minimal. That's mm. how wraps intended. And then, you know, just to go on what, how we are as humans, we just fundamentally cheat and try to make everything better. Right. Guys realized, Oh shit, we can make these wraps more aggressive type material and we get more spring out of the hole. So nowadays wraps are pretty advanced. You can get, I mean, I know guys that get 150 pounds out of the wrap. Right. That's why I'm not one of those guys. I, I wrap very loose. I just, it just, I don't like them. It hurts. And, uh, in fact, I contribute probably my, a lot of my injuries, from wraps, uh, you're handling weight that you typically can't handle without the wrap, so your intensity is higher. Um, and then the wraps force your kneecap; they hold your kneecap down in a position that your kneecap rolls over. Yeah, your and you, move, you have to move different. It's kind of right. like like squatting in a Smith machine versus free bar, or just a different path. Totally. Yeah. So the wrap actually forces your kneecap into a different way, which I believe is a lot of guys that are having knee injuries are guys that are wrap lifters. And because we're not using wraps the way they were intended, light wrap, supportive. No, we're cranking the shit out of them to where you, it's like your legs in a cast almost yeah. to where you can't even squat halfway to depth without a couple hundred pounds on your back just because of the rebound and the casting of the wrap. So, uh, yeah. 
Get over that. Wow. Yeah. Back to the poop story. Yeah, yeah. back to poop, yeah. man. <laughs> so I fucking get out of the truck and I waddle over to the other side. And Jenny jumps over and I don't think she understands the severity of how bad I just shit. Like, I mean, I'm talking a can of baby food exploded in my <laughs> ass. <laughs> like, you know, it, 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 was, it was brutal. And so I opened the, I closed the door, like kind of, cause I'm still standing cause I don't want to sit and just smudge the shit all over. Yeah. And I have like my knee on the seat. The door's halfway open and Jenny's <laughs> driving me in the middle of LA to find the, a fucking cat. Cause the door not being closed is going to help. I, well, well, for me to not sit on my ass, that's the that's position I had to yeah. be. And it, it smelled. Yeah. So I could, I had to keep my food down. We had to make two. Yeah. So I get to the gas station. Mind you, I look like a fucking crazy person. You know, I'm shirtless in a singlet and waddling around. I'm 350 fucking pounds. It's huge. And she's smelling like shit, obviously. <laughs> and I, no shirt on when I go into the gas station. I, I, we didn't have time to put a fucking shirt on. So yeah. I just waddle in there. I see the bathroom. I'm like, there we go. So I thank God it was a bigger gas station. It had a decent sized bathroom. I get in the bathroom. There's someone in there. I, we got, we got <laughs> yeah, business like, to do. I'm not here to talk. I'm, not, I'm here to get this shit cleaned up. So I take my singlet off. I take my fucking poopy underwear off. Butt naked. Sitting in the, <laughs> sit, sit in the bathroom <laughs> gas station. In a Chevron gas station. And I start bird bathing out of the sink to clean up my <laughs> asshole. God. And my balls because my balls are covered <laughs> in shit <laughs> so yeah mind you these special underwear we have to fucking wear tidy whites i don't know tidy whites i don't wear them so mm -hmm. we bought these for this meat i just assumed it was a three pack so i probably got two more in the truck no, no. jenny only brought the one we just yeah. didn't think of it sure you know yeah like uh obviously i had multiple do underwear you now plan to uh poop your pants yeah, do, poop, you, do you bring, bring, you bring two underwear. underwears yeah contingency like, yeah, plans yeah, just, yeah. Yep, you, you learn and you adapt you yeah. know like you, you, get, you get better every it's time die, yeah. right <laughs> <laughs> so i'm bird bathing cleaning my fucking little balls trying to get this poop out from my ass taking the whole roll of paper towels didn't give a shit to clean up. This guy walks out. I'm standing there naked, fucking cleaning my shitty point. I thought I was a homeless guy, just yeah. a well-fed homeless guy. And uh, he got out of there quickly. So I, 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 I'm trying to salvage the underwear, and then that wasn't happening. It just threw him away. Yeah. All right. So I get myself nice and clean. I pull, I clean my singlet because there's a little poop in my singlet, too. Yeah. So I clean that up, put my clothes back on, and I just charge out of there quickly to get back to the truck. And then I get to the truck, and I'm expecting like that though jenny probably already yeah. got the fresh pair of underwear how she understands what i just dealt with yeah. i'm like do you have any more underwear she's like no that was it i was like what do you mean that was it she's like, <laughs> that was the only pair i brought i was like oh my god so i'm like fuck there's got to be like a t-shirt warehouse or something nearby where i get some tidy whities no there wasn't well there probably was just nothing that i found in a quick right. enough time i had to get there so and again like I had to get there to go be two hours early and my yeah. well, my squat flight's probably not gonna be till an hour and a half anyways but that's just how i am i just yeah. i want to be there so um we fucked in spruce up and I head in and, uh, you know, again, first one there we're in there and, uh, I, I, I can't help but think I just reek of shit. Like I clean my singlet. Dude, that's the worst. But when, even if you think you fucking have a wet fart and you mm -hmm. go out, you're like, that's the only thing you can think about. That's all I can think about. It, it tore, I was like, well, no, I gotta go home. Well, my, I gotta go home. The whole yeah. ass of my singlet soaking wet from me just cleaning it yeah. in the sink. So I'm sitting down, I'm like, I'm not sure what I'm sitting on, but Is it's slushy. Water? Right. And, uh, the, and I'm not having a great day right now. I ended up having a phenomenal meat. Uh, I believe I totaled 2303 in that meat. Do you think it's I was, because I was, you I shit was your there. pants that yeah. you had a great <laughs> meat? Yeah. If I didn't shit my pants in the drive, I would have done so on the platform. So <laughs> <laughs> thank God. And at this point, I had no underwear. Well, yeah. the, well, actually, I would have slept underwear. But here we are, second round in, or after the cleaning and doing my meat, I don't have underwear on the time. So I'm like, dude, if I shit on the platform, it's I'm shitting on the floor. Like, it's gonna be evident like everyone's i can't hide people this people are gonna see people are gonna see it so uh, i think i, God, I squatted 937 it. pounds at me and um <laughs> I, I did this shit myself <laughs> so it was a good day it's a good day and then at the end of the day i kept thinking like man all these guys they was they must really like me to stick around and sit by me because i don't i know i don't smell good or maybe they all shit their pants on the way in and they're hoping nobody notices could every, be every, everybody's poopy yeah this, you know i was i was just trying to think of like how i would feel if i was just you know walking into a chevron we're going to take a piss <laughs> and then there's a 350 pound naked dude just tattooed the fuck up bird bathing bird bathing i like i like that you go in. into the bathroom first and you start taking your shit, yeah. and then you come out because now so you have is, to get out of the so there's, room. There's, there's a there's, gentleman that experienced that. Yes, this is, this I want. Is I want to hear. Yeah. I want to hear from his eyes. Right. right what, yeah. what did you see? Yeah. What How did you like? feel? <laughs> How were you scared? <laughs> what were the emotions? He's in therapy now. I'm sure. Right. I'm sure he was a little confused. Uh, 
and we got the hell out of there. Well, thanks yeah. to Jenny for bringing yeah. that up. <laughs> yeah, let's start this one. I, off um, right. I, uh, it was, <laughs> dude. I can't. I, when we talk about like, I have, I have the, I have the worst, one of the worst poop experience. So, like, oh. I needed treatment after a, a poop story that I had. Do you want to hear my? Of course. What, like, oh, I don't yes. know. Um, so I was actually when I after when I got shot when I was in the hospital. You know, so I was just, I was just laid up in the hospital forever and we couldn't get my pain under control. So I ended up getting on an epidural. Oh. I was on an epidural for like 11 or 13 days or yeah. something like that. You know, that's like the spine. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I couldn't feel anything from like my chest down. Well, it also st- kind of stops your organs from working, you know, and like, or not working, but I didn't shit. And, and it was common for me when I was in the hospital. I only shit like every week. Every 10 days or so because yeah. of all the opiates and stuff. Drugs, you're not, you're not yeah. eating proper either. You're right. Just, yeah. And then, so actually, like all of this, like I had a, I, I couldn't, I couldn't leave my bed to shit. I had to shit in a bedpan, mm-hmm. and I would hold myself up by the. There was a bar, up. So I would hold myself up while, and I would shit on a bedpan, and then my mom would wipe my ass. You know, so like, it, you know, thank you for your service. Yeah, thank you, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, but so I was on this epidural. So like before they put me on the epidural, I'd lost a shit ton of weight, dude. I was fucking leaner than I've ever been in my life because I was muscular. But then I lost just all that fat, yeah. you know? So I had, like, fucking 14 abs. And then by, like, day 10 or 11 on this epidural, my stomach was just, like... I was like, this isn't okay. Something's, Something's wrong. wrong. I look fucking pregnant. And they're like, no, you're fine. And I showed them a picture. I was like, this was a week ago. Right. This isn't fine, you know? Um, so the, 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 the pain was being helped. But I was like, this is fucked up. So they took me off. They took the epidural out. Um, and it was just, you know, I... Things were coming back online slowly. I could, my my legs felt like wax or something, you know. Yep. So my mom, you know, she's there with me all the time. But my the the nurses are you know out doing something else, and my mom goes to get lunch, and all of a sudden I'm I'm just laying there. I still can't move, you know. And I just I'm just like, <laughs> I start smelling it. I was like, I smell poop. But I had my roommate had a colostomy bag, so it oh, smelled so like it poop been in there quite often. Yep. But then I started feeling like a lump under my leg and i was like no no i'm fucking uncontrollably <laughs> pooping and so like i can feel just and we're talking like two weeks of fucking Ugh. two weeks worth and it's just like it is like it's it's sliding down the it's underneath my leg yeah and it's like so much that it's like but underneath my knee now at this point and so i'm just a mess and i can't move and my mom comes back and she's like what's wrong i was like i'm fucking shitting mom you know like i can't stop fucking i can't i can't i couldn't stop shitting you know um it was a fucking mess dude and so then actually um this color was this this, yeah right it was was dark brown and then so this a nurse came in to clean me up and she was like a really attractive Right? female lieutenant exactly and i'm like of- god damn it you know i actually <laughs> think Wars. like so like she rolled me on my side and she's holding my leg up and just you know like spread them and she's fucking getting in there and she's cleaning me up you know and i think that was like one time i've kind of broke a little in the hospital i think i was just sitting there like because <laughs> <laughs> like it's just like that degrading ass yeah. shit dude like times like that How did um, I get here? yeah so she's she's cleaning me up and dude she was she was by far the most attractive nurse on the ward and i'm like fuck she drew the short fuck, straw that day. yeah and then um so, but anyways, you know, I survived that, but, um, couldn't talk to her anymore, ever right. again, you know, but then, so I was out in town at, <laughs> at, at, at my girlfriend's apartment and I fucking go to get in the elevator. We're out in the civilian world. I go to get in the elevator, elevator's door opens and who's in there? Lieutenant. Fucking, how, how, oh, Lieutenant nurse that man. wiped my ass. And I was like, fuck, <laughs> like, God damn it. You're like last time, you know, I look a, lot, a little different from last time you saw me, huh? Like, Hey, I'm not pooping my pants anymore. If you want to like gra- grab a, grab a coffee or something, you know, well, and, and you're now, you know, she's down. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. Shit, dude. Yeah. yeah. So that was, but that was, fu- and then it, 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 you know, then, um, they, uh, they cleaned me up and then they just put me on a bedpan. Yeah. And so I just laid there for hours and we didn't think of it, but I couldn't move still, you know? Yep. Um, and then when I finally got off the bedpan, I had these like huge bed sores Oh. and I was just getting to the part where that, um, I could, um, leave the hospital and take a shower. Yeah. Um, but now with these bed sores, that was another like two months where I couldn't shower just cause and of then, the sores. and then just so more shit where like my mom and my girlfriend and the nurses and even my dad are putting like this seaweed fucking shit on my butthole. Yeah. Cause I, and I have these huge scar, huge scars in my butt crack. <laughs> Cause I shit my pants. 
<laughs> like it's like that's a, those are gnarly scars. How'd you get those For scars? The war. Fucking shit my pants. Yeah. You know, like a fucking I, I pooped, you know. It's not my fault. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, that's a uh, I guess that's um it, it always kind of comes down to that. Like dudes can dudes can sit around and talk about poop, food and um uh dicks for a surprisingly oh, yeah. long time. Oh, 21 we minutes. Do, we do. Seconds. Yeah, 20 Oh, that's yeah, that's actually true, yeah. Um we do have um um a good show planned here. I want to finish up with uh this interview with Brandon and get to know a little bit more things. But first off, we got to share the slapper. I got to yeah. I got to you know like um so the Savage Slapper. If you're first time listening to Savage Saturdays, we share the Savage Slapper. Um it's just uh musical recommendations. Actually last week I went with King 810. I say 810 because that's how I say area codes, but um, it probably is. It just depends yeah. on who Tip- says it. Typically, I've been sharing new music, but like I've been, uh, you ever go through like old ass music kicks oh, where yeah. for like th- three to five days, you just listen to all the shit you listened to in high school and you feel yep. fucking great? Yep. That's what I've been doing. I swear you know? to God, I've been to it. Some R- you're saying that. So, like, so for like, so I've been listening to like a lot of Emery and the Ataris and, and the stuff like that, but for the gym, um, the slapper today is a song called Kill Me Quickly and it's by a band called Thrice. <laughs> dude, yeah, dude. Are you fucking Yeah, the me? album is Illusions of Safety. Yes, I, yeah, I, dude. I'm well aware. Yeah. I, so I was just in Montana for a week mm-hmm. and I was driving my dad's truck and so you're using someone else's shit and I just plugged my phone in and used Pandora and I was like just playing old Blink-182 shit mm-hmm. and it was playing like all the old stuff like uh, just all the pop punk, you know mm-hmm. what I mean, of like the early 2000s. Yeah. I was like, fuck, man, it feels like high school yeah. again. But uh, thrice is, dude. I swear, yeah. I listened to the whole album with thrice the other day. Yeah, I, I remember. I found yeah. So this, so like, usually we share new music. Yeah. But so this album came out in two thousand two. Okay. And I remember I found thrice because of their song um, "To Awake and Avenge the Dead" yep. because it was That's on cool. the Atticus CD. Yeah. Do you remember the yes, Atticus CD, dude? Yep. Do you know Atticus still sells shirts? No shit. Like I have, I have <gasps> a buddy got one for me like two years ago, oh and God. I'm gonna get some more. I want more like dead Atticus. Bird? Yeah, upside mm-hmm. down dead bird. Yeah. And this is this was me in high school. Atticus <laughs> had a shirt it was just a broken heart and that it was like it was it was a broken heart where your heart goes and that was like my favorite fucking shirt that's the one i wore all the time you know like <laughs> just I'm yeah sad. just a dude right. walking around and but uh yeah but um dude um it uh I, I like listening to like this album takes me back when i'm out there rowing and stuff like that i just kind of remember like because that was that was my early years fitness music and i'm like fuck dude i used to run you know, up in Minnesota, when I started working out, it was like, you know, like, uh, up in the, I would run to the gym up there in the winter and I ran to like the Maplewood community center and I would wear like a fucking trash suit to sweat. Cause that's what you do when you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Right. You know? <laughs> but it out. like run into this album with my CD player and shit like that. And yep. it gets all skippy and stuff like that. Yep. So you got headphones and <laughs> wires all over the fucking place, you know? But yeah, that's that's um. If you I I know th- I know a lot of people have heard of Thrice, but maybe some of the younger people that listen aren't uh, too too savvy on their old shit. Like their artist in the ambulance is another good album. Yeah, mm-hmm. but that's yeah. when they kind of I don't know they kind of lost their sound a little bit. Well, like I, you know, like they lost that sound. Right, right. I was at we were I was actually listening to like. People change, artists change, all and the stuff time. like AFI, that. AFI, yeah, mm-hmm. a- AFI. You can listen to their albums evolve. You yeah, seem like a Treyu. <laughs> so like, and I saw them live dude, bands Hawaii. bands you- get bands get fucking shit on for changing their sound. Yeah. But but like they they want it. They don't want to do the same thing over and over and over and over again for years. And so like I love like does, is thrice, you know, like they're uh, you know like they have those albums where it's like earth air fire water super super different from illusions of safety totally. you know but i was like all right i like this shit or like the devil wears prada they've changed a shit ton yep. and like they get shit on by their diehard fans right like the old people but i like the old music and i'm and i'm smart enough to grow with the new music and same with like asking alexandria these people i i, I get I, I watch these people shit on bands for changing their sound, but it's like, what do you want them to do? The same fucking thing right. over and over again? You have that album. F- yeah. Like, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. For real. Yeah. You've gone soft. It's like, no, they've just gotten better. Right. You know? Cause like when these guys are in their like 19s, 20s, all the music they do is like, bah! which we like, but at some point, you want to have a little more context. You, to you it. grow up right. a little bit, you know? Yeah. It's like, no, we have, we have substance and things like that yeah. now. Yeah. No, but I, I fucking, um, 
Yeah, I, I love that. I'm that, gonna look for the old Atticus albums now. That you talked about it. Yeah, dude. But like, I like, you can't you can't find it online or anything like that. And that's I found so many cool bit like that's I uh, mighty mighty boss tones was on there and shit like that. Pipe and, down. Yeah, there was a lot of good. Did things. you like the Ataris? Did you like? Uh, did you know the uh, the Atari the Ataris? I have always called them the Ataris. I'm not sure. They were dude. They're a fucking sick ass band. But um, Do you like a the Ataris. I, I've never been too big into Trivium. No, Atreyu. Atreyu. Oh, I. I only know a couple. I like. I know lip gloss and black. That's a great song. Like that. That was like. That's like the evolution of the breakdown. Yeah. Well, that's know? that's that's the post hardcore era. Yeah. Where it was like, those bands were they had a little harder sound. They had sick breakdowns and things like that, but they were still talking about emotional things. Yeah. You know, like Atreyu is all about yeah. relationships. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it's good music. I like. Yeah. I like it. But you have to be in that certain. No, mood. I like those. I like those early two thousands breakdowns where it's like chicka dun, chicka dun. Boom. Oh, yeah. It's super slow. Like if somebody came out with that today, we'd be like, what the fuck is this? Is because breakdowns now are suit like way more aggressive, but like the slow headbang yep. of the early 2000 breakdown, you know, I love that. I'm outside of your oh, window. <laughs> I just heard that <laughs> song. Yeah, right dude. <laughs> you know, those were the breakdowns <laughs> back then. Chicka dun. Chicka dun. Yeah. No. So I, I've been, I've been doing that. And actually, um, uh, I, I want, I might, so we do the Savage Slapper, but I'm thinking about like starting like the Savage Sapper. Cause I listen to a lot of emo yeah, you do. softy music too. You yep. know, it's like, That's I, a good idea. yeah. And even I, um, I even been listening to a lot of Emery when I work out, maybe we'll save that for, um, for next week's, uh, maybe we'll introduce the Sapper. I got a question for you, Owen. What's that? Is our email up and running for the show? I can't remember, remember if I can't did remember. That. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. It's in my note. Yeah. We, uh, I totally <laughs> th- forgot this was, about this that. was a personal, but, uh, you know, I was, um, we, we want to get an email set up so that, um, you guys who listen and tune in can ask us questions. Don't worry about it for right now. All we'll right. check it out, but we'll have that ready by yeah. next week. Next week. It'll All be right, good. cool. That's our introduction. Let's get into the fucking show. Hey. Now where we left off in part one, you just got hit by a motorcycle. I hit on my motorcycle. Yeah, right, right. You got your. your um, <laughs> it seems very right, innocent. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, you're in your truck and a motorcycle hit you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, big um, deal. So, so it, like within six months, you tear your quad. You, you know, you kind of you start your recovery there, but then you you get hit by a truck while you were riding your motorcycle, and that's kind of where we left off. So you know, kind of really, um, uh, want to talk about. The recovery, that's basically because you like you, you sort of started your recovery, but then you just went right back into the shit. And it was like a double whammy. Right. And so let's just say your recovery started when you got, you know, after you got hit um, when you were on your motorcycle. What, what was what was recovery life like? What did that all entail? Yeah, well, like you said, I just spent three months on the couch recovering from a knee surgery and then got hit and then, you know, broke my pelvis, tore my socket, cr- collapsed vertebrae in my spine, tore my erector. So, anyways, I was right back to the fucking couch. Yeah, little, you know my my lazy boy chair. Yeah, you know, so uh, it sucked, man. It was so. It was like, do I, they not make special lazy boys for people your size? Because you have your your chair is like the size of a chair that I would get, right, and you dominate the fuck out of that thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's even a bigger one, but it's yeah. not the right size. Yeah, I was like, because I, you know, just you know, seeing the pictures, I'm like, <laughs> you really dominate the fuck like, out of those chairs. Like, is the there not me. sizes? You know, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, you know, in hindsight. Through that whole thing, I should have went and bought a good one with that was electronic to help you get out and all that yeah. noise. Had you known you I were going to be in it for that long, I would have yeah. probably right. would have. Right. Yeah. But we didn't think that was the case. Right. Actually, I don't even think I talked about this in the last one, but it was funny. My first after my knee surgery, right when me and Jenny got home, and I sit in my chair and I'm looking at my fucking you know 42 inch TV, which is fine for the room size. And I was like, dude, I I'm not sitting here for months looking at this little TV. So I called my buddy and I was like, hey, I need you to meet Jenny at Costco with your truck. And he's like, okay. So you know, no hesitation. They, just, they go there. I give Jenny my credit card. I'm like the biggest one they have, and then she's like, "What? They have some pretty big one, like the biggest, whatever one they the have. biggest one I is." Like, I don't give a fuck. So what'd she get? Like eighty? It was a seventy five inch. Okay, the, yeah. that's what they had at the time. So she had this big old seventy five inch TV. <laughs> I was like, "Fuck yeah!" But mind you, I can't even get off the couch to help load this yeah. thing. So I have my my uncle. And You're my, just like it's crooked. Left, dude, left, shouting out commands and shit. I, I so I text my uncle and I was like, "Hey, I, I need I need you to come over and help hang this TV for me. You know if you can." He was like, yeah, yeah, we'll be there in a little bit. So him and my 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 uh, my nana and then her boyfriend, you know, they come over. I didn't realize they were playing golf all day. 
So they come over and just obliterate it. They're just fucking <laughs> hammered. Yeah. Like, like, you guys are useless. Right. And I'm trying to direct them, sitting in my chair, getting frustrated as fuck. Just like, because, I mean, I could have done it myself in 20 minutes. Right. And they're drunk and happy, but Can't you are like in a very, a, a very tough spot yeah. in life with zero patience. I want the TV on and I want everyone to get the fuck out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? So <laughs> that's, that's where I'm at, right? So yeah. I'm trying to help them direct them and all this shit. And then my uncle's diabetic. So he's holding this fucking giant TV on one side and my grandpa's on the other side and they're lifting to try to hang it. And they're, my grandpa keeps saying, lift it up, lift it up. And my uncle, we call him Turk, his name's Turk. He's standing there holding the TV. His sugar went low and he's drunk. So he's holding the TV, just completely blacked, like white out. Had yeah. no idea. Just zombied. And we're trying to get him to respond. He's not even responding. I'm like, don't drop the fucking TV. <laughs> yeah. Don't get the fucking TV yeah. from it's a two thousand fucking dollar TV. You are gonna die <laughs> right. and the TV off. Right. Like, that's the thing is brand new. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. So we fucking get him off the damn TV. We sit yeah. him down. We're force feeding because when you get low like that, yeah. you don't even know what's going on really. Yeah. At least my experiences with my uncle. And you're telling him to eat and he has to eat. He doesn't want it. He's like, what the fuck what are you talking about? You don't need to eat. Yeah. Like, you know, you gotta eat this fucking sugar, man. Weird. And then like instant like you can see it happen like he's sitting there just oblivious and then all of a sudden just comes back online that's crazy so is he a because like so is he a type one diabetic then correct yeah okay yeah yeah so is my sister yeah this is my family oh really yeah Yeah, i i actually have um like i go hypoglycemic quite often i have blood sugar issues um especially when i was really big and force feeding all the time i was super worried i was like man if i i might become full-blown diabetic from all this food i'm eating yeah and then i mean i've abused insulin before Mm -hmm. you know and uh, that's not good right so you know i was kind of asking for it almost in a way but insulin is the most anabolic thing on the fucking planet so yeah diabetics in bodybuilding actually have a huge advantage because they get insulin prescribed dude you know what's funny is like sometimes when people have medical issues but they get like females with like um um shoot it's not copd so uh, some I, I know some females who have like thyroid issues or something. They get put three. On, yeah, and they get and then they just become fucking monsters. They're not not monsters, but they're just buff and strong, and yeah, they're you know, um, but they don't you know they're like and then they talk about their disease, but they don't talk about the treatment and how that's doing. What is this uh, like, yeah, Lance like, Armstrong, right? Uh, so my uncle is actually Lance Armstrong's chiropractor, personal chiropractor, travels all over the world with him. And um, <clears throat> my uncle's a professional bodybuilder as well. Mm-hmm. He doesn't compete anymore. Sure. But back in the day, he was a prof- professional bodybuilder. And uh, when Lance was winning all these, like, I knew Lance was on testosterone because my uncle was prescribing it to him. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> and it was just kind of odd, like, oh, I guess you're allowed to do it. Yeah. You know, if you're have a medical reason to do yeah, it. Yeah, sure, yeah. <clears throat> no, he was just juicing that whole time. Right, yeah. And, no big deal. You know, he didn't think anything of it, yeah. which is, I mean, where, at what, what point do you have some kind of like uh, ethic you see or like um, integrity for that? Right. Right. Like I'm, I'm There's no secret that I abuse steroids. Yeah. I would never compete in a federation right. that doesn't that, yeah. allow steroids mm-hmm. or that drug testing yeah. to be clean. Right. Yeah. So, you know, Lance, you know, at the same time, he seems like a great guy. I don't know anything about him personally, but what a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. No, dude, I fucking love when CrossFitters get popped, you know? Oh, yeah, oh my God. And they're fucking whiny ass little bitch excuses. Like, no, I, you know, like I strained my bicep. So just like anybody else would do, I was on, hor- I was on growth hormone for 14 months. <laughs> right. I didn't know that I couldn't do that. It was, I was treating a medical thing. I was like, Hey, you know what? When people get hurt, you don't have to take growth hormone. It's banned in your sport. Right. So here's your fucking three year sentence. Go yep. fuck yourself. Well, the, you there know? was like, a big crosser that popped and then he didn't pop for like running a little testosterone or mm-hmm. taking a little Anavar. There was Anadrol. There was so much shit in his yeah. system. I was like, dude, this is a full blown fucking psycho. Yeah, but like you're talking like, about like, like that, <laughs> you didn't accidentally do this. That dude was awesome because like on the list of there there was there was a there was one year where it was like fifteen people and then like fourteen of them, they were taking all these weird fucking compounds you know trying to skirt the system this guy's just like boom test anadrol he's right. taking the real drug you know he's right. like fuck it yeah so just <laughs> for people to understand how the testing and all it works it's really easy to manipulate test and to cheat them yeah um one of the most common ways if you have a little money it's very easy to do uh let's sell nfl players ufc fighters guys like this abuse steroids and get along with this, get away with the testing, same with the Olympics and things like that. Mm-hmm. Like you can't just take a test and then it's going to say, Oh, you're taking this drug. You have to test for that drug. So if they don't know that the drug even exists, they can't test for it. So I can't, I can't just test you for testosterone and it's going to tell me you're taking D ball. I have to test you for D ball to know yeah. if you're taking D ball. You know, you have to test for each specific drug or each hormone. And then each drug has like, 
or like say testosterone, but there's like 20 different kinds Durant's, of testosterone. Yep. So they, they, so they have to test for all of them. No. Um, cause you're, what you're confusing it with is the ester weight, which is connected to the testosterone. So like a testosterone propionate, a cypionate and inotate, they're all testosterone. It's all the same hormone. It just has a different ester weight, which controls the way that it breaks down in your body and the speed that your body can absorb it. So no, you would only have to test them for the testosterone, okay. but let's say like, like Trimblone, let's say you're testing someone for, like if you're testing for testosterone, you would have no idea they're on Trimblone because right. you're not testing them for Trimblone. But then Trimblone, there's different ester weights as well. There's acetate and inotate, yeah. but you would only have to test for Tremblone to okay, identify yeah. that. But it's very easy to, to change molecule structure and things like that and these things. I mean, these are top level scientists making millions, maybe mm -hmm. billions of dollars that do this stuff. So they'll find a ways and um, they can find ways to, to achieve Yeah, test. testing is just a cat and mouse game. You yeah, know? Well, so it, like, that's the, you know, that's the thing. And it's funny because, you know, when somebody does piss hot, um, they just get shamed to right. death, you know? But it's like, look around. You know, people ask me, is like, hey, do you think, you know, like all these top CrossFit athletes are natural? I'm like, hey, I can't say they're not because I've never saw, I've never watched somebody inject, but right. I mean. Probably aren't though. They're probably I mean, not natural. Like, yeah, right. right. I mean, you know, like, like NFL players, like, oh, okay. Right. Yeah, okay. Well, this is, this is yeah. like, I, it drives me <laughs> yeah. crazy though. Like, <laughs> a fitness event, when, who the fuck cares? If yeah, it's right. Well, like, see fit people, like, my, take some fucking drugs. I, I have a hard time with it, you know, so, or, or you know, tr CrossFit is definitely trying to keep it clean, you know, but they're obviously, I think not like you can't, you can't. So people. why not just fucking open the doors, I agree. you know, Same or thing. like, or like have like powerlifting has division or powerlifting has tested and non-tested. Right. And then, and, and if you, and if you, so like, you know, non-tested is there. That's an option. And if you, but if you go into tested and you piss hot, you are, that's fucking career suicide. Like yep. you are shame. Like everybody, like you are the worst. Cause you literally have the fucking option to right. go. Right. Go do that. Yeah. One. Go like go. So, yeah. No, USPA, they, uh, which is the bigger of the federations that's non-tested. They do tested uh, meets as well, but you know, it's distinguished. Um, they have a policy where if you're competing in a non-tested, federation and you pop dirty they won't allow you into the uspa they're like basically they don't want to get the rejects that are supposed to be clean but are testing hot they're like oh we'll just right. take them no, yeah. no no fuck you you mm -hmm. had the option to come here in the beginning yeah you chose to cheat right yeah, you had an integrity violation from the beginning so we don't want you in yeah, our why why yeah. even fuck with you we don't need you and uh for those that don't that aren't involved in the sport there is a big difference between tested and untested numbers and the guys that do it. And then there's a couple genetic freaks that are in the tested side that are top dogs that are putting numbers up that are comparable, if not even better than the untested side. But then those guys usually end up testing positive somewhere down the road. Yeah. So that's what pisses me off. Like there's a power lifter, Kelly brand, not to, you know, I just doubted him, but fuck him. Yeah. Um, he's a big Canadian guy. I, I don't hate him or anything. Sure. Actually, I, I used to get along with him or not mm -hmm. that we don't get along now. We used to talk. And he would regularly make comments about like, man, I wish I could, I was competing like you guys and I could run gear and get that recovery. And yeah. he was like, he, he just make comments. I'm like, what do you mean you can? Like, you totally can. Like, why don't you just do that then? Yeah. And, um, and his numbers were astronomical, you know, getting stronger and stronger all the time. And it's like, it's, that's weird that your numbers keep going up so quickly, but you're untested. And then, and then he would make those comments to me. So, and I'm not one to question anyone. Like, right. I don't know. Yeah. You, I don't know the guy. I don't know how it, what his integrity is like. I don't know anything about him. So I take him at base value. And then fast forward a year or so later, test positive and similar to the yeah. CrossFit guy. It wasn't like, oh, a little something. You just something. know they've been doing it the whole we fucking the whole time. time. It's like, dude, just be fucking honest so all those about that shit. All those times you know? that he, but then how, how sick is it that he would literally go out of his way to message me about how he wishes he, you know, I'm like, but you've been, you were, because let's just say, all right, let's give him the benefit of the doubt and say he just started juicing that one time that he got caught, right? Mm -hmm. There would be an astronomical difference in size, strength, physique, all these things. If you never using drugs and then all of a sudden started using drugs, your body is going to train, change it rather quickly. You can go back and look. There's no change in physique. Yeah. There's no change, no dramatic change in number. It's been a steady increase. So it goes to show you've been juicing the entire fucking time. But, I, and then try, and then like saying to me, oh, I wish I could juice like, you know, like, so are you downgrading the work yeah. that I'm doing yeah. saying that you would be doing better? You sick fuck, you've been juicing yeah. the whole time and my numbers are better than yours. So fuck you. And like, I, you know, it, it's, it's, it's tough. It's weird. My, my stance on steroids because like people can't, you can't just, you can't just be like, Hey, I'm breaking the law. I'm breaking right. the law. I'm in possession of like fucking felony shit here, but in sport, you know, but it's like, fuck it's, man, well, you know, to, to argue that, um, it's, it's a silly law and it's a bullshit law. 
how can we be okay with people drinking and smoking pot? That's what, dude, that's where I, if, 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 if McDonald's is legal, right. Can't so wait. should testosterone, yep. like testosterone should be legal. Like, Oh, people get, you know, it's bad for your health. I'm like, <laughs> that's bad for your health. All right. There's you like, don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't have a case here. You, right. don't have, you don't have a case here. Pick a different, <laughs> pick a different thing. You know, people get angry. I'm like, well, people get angry, not on testosterone too. Steroids like were yeah. legal all the way up until I think it was 88 or 89. Yeah, they're just know. trying to, and it ruined it. And the, so the reason why they made testosterone and steroids illegal was because they didn't know how to test for it in major league sports, baseball, basketball, football, these things. They just didn't know how to test for it. So the country decided in order to eliminate the issue, we'll just ban it outright. So Seems regular guys it. that just want to live and go to the gym and do steroids because it makes them a better person or feel better, whatever it is, are now penalized because of major sports. So this is why I question, okay, advancements in testing are there. We now know what guys are taking. We now know how to get ahead of the curve and things like that, right? right? So then why is it still legal for the regular Joe to do it? Why can't it just be illegal for that specific sport? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. And then by doing that, you create an underground market, you know, and then you, you know, you get involved in selling steroids or selling drugs, you know, and then what comes along with that? Other drugs well, like that this is, more is money. This, this is the same uh, conversation argument about fucking legalizing marijuana. <clears throat> and we're just, I actually, I lived in, um, I was living in Denver, when it went up for vote, that was, I think Colorado was one of the first, first states. It was. Yeah. And so I've, I actually like, I was, I registered to vote uh, just to vote for, for that. legal, the legalization of marijuana. And I don't fucking use it, but I'm like, this is fucking dumb. This right. is, and, and, and as soon as it became legal there, I was like, all right, why don't the other fucking 50 states just get on board today? Because in 50 years, it's going to be legal across the board. I don't know. Yeah. Not 50. Right. Very yeah. Much so, less. Yeah. But it, even like 50 years is a blip. In, in, in terms in the, of yeah, so like world. let's just fucking do it now, right? Just legalize this shit, yeah. But no, um, you know, we we got a little sidetracked there, but I'm um, talking about um, uh, because of because of insulin and stuff. But this is fun stuff to talk about, and it's and it's a I really fucking, it's it's a weird thing, and 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 so many people, so many people are on fucking, are 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 using testosterone. So there's a statistic, and all, these, and all the girls are using um. What's it called? Anavar, yeah, things like, things like that. Yeah, it's so common. You can't. People don't talk about it. One, because they're fucking ashamed. Uh, that, uh, but also because they're breaking the law. But it's just a weird. But technically, not not or not just because you're taking steroids doesn't necessarily mean you're breaking the law. Because just like everything in our fucking country, there's loopholes. So you can get testosterone prescribed from you, yeah, from the doctor. You can mm -hmm. get Anavar. You can get all these drugs. I went and tried to get fucking testosterone. But uh, my natural test levels were too high. You just went to the wrong doctor. Yeah, I know. But so like, so like they're exactly like fucking this is so here's these kinds of things annoy the shit out of me. And I was at the grocery store two days ago. This is the same fucking thing. Uh, uh, three days ago. And I know the rules. I just I was I was in a hurry. I was super hungry. I grabbed three steaks. They were all individually wrapped and a pound of beef. And I go up to the register and she starts rigging my stuff up. And she says, oh, actually, you're only supposed to uh, be allowed two. She was like, I can take two off and ring you up twice so you won't get in trouble. And I was like, get in trouble. Well, well, define trouble. Well, all right. right. If, if, if it's the same in the end, what are we doing? What are right. we doing? So it's like, you know, and like cops will, or like I'll be, you know, if I was to have testosterone illegally, um, but there's a doctor who can write me a bullshit prescription and there's doctors in towns in the town that are writing cops. Well, cops are taking it. Yeah, like that's and what I'm I saying. I think they should be, though. Yeah, well, like I, absolutely. Yeah, they're giving you know, physical, like, physical yeah. combat with yeah. people. And a cop's job is mm -hmm. it's not like military, right? Like military, you go out to, to mm -hmm. execute an order and take care of it. A cop's job is to maintain yeah. peace. Mm -hmm. So in the military, you use your weapons. You know, cops are not supposed to use their weapons. That's a secondary defense. They're supposed to be able to use their hands and try to defuse the situation. So I'd rather have a juiced up cop who can physically <laughs> handle somebody yeah. rather than feel that he needs to shoot the guy or tase him or whatever else or some further, further thing because he's inadequate, you know, in his physical stature. But if you have a big old fucking juiced up fucking cop telling you what to do, you're probably going to listen. You're like, man, this motherfucker can whoop my ass. This guy's huge. Right. He's not just going to hit me with the taser. <laughs> Hold me down and really, His really embarrassing. Vest looks yeah. tiny on him. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I I think that once you get in the department, it should be like, okay, now go. Your screening for your your cycle that we're going to put your you badge, on. Here's your weapon. Here's your gear. Other countries do it, especially in the military. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'd have to imagine that all of our Navy SEALs and all of our top dogs, they're getting fucking prescribe test. Yeah, they're, they're probably getting some didn't good pilots, issued. Didn't pilots issued used to get issued meth, meth. meth back yeah. in the day? Go go pills. Yeah. Yeah. They're brown pills. There's pure methamphetamine. Mm -hmm. And then we had to stop doing it, and I think it was maybe it was two thousand three or 
I, maybe 2013, I'm not sure, it's a 10-year gap, but one of those numbers makes sense. But I remember we, our pilots during the Iraqi war, or maybe Afghanistan invasion, whatever it was, we killed uh, a bunch of British like uh, allies, uh -huh. and then the pilots were, you know, they were up for two, three days, yeah. hallucinating, oh, high shit. as a kite. And they thought it was, in, I, I mean, you can look the video up on YouTube, it's pretty graphic, but they're, you see them, like, they see the target, and they're, like, debating whether or not they need to kill them, and they're like, yeah, we, you know, we got it, and they did, and then they're like, Man, I don't know. That was right. I don't know those or those guys or whatever. You huh. have to watch the video for yeah. context, but yeah, it was like, oh man, these guys are fucking literally getting worked to work to insanity. Yeah, you know, taking these fucking pills to stay up. Maybe that's why they're they're super strict about flight schedules now. Like you cannot break schedule almost, you know. But yeah, like um, yeah, it's just I oh man, what a confusing world. Like yeah. you know, like land of the free. Kind Except of. don't do what you want to do. You're right. Yeah. It's only free. Is it hurting anybody else? No, but don't do that thing. Right. You know, like, let, but land of the free. Land of, <laughs> wave your flag. Wave your flag. Whoa, wave put your, those stakes yeah. back. Wait, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't wave your flag there. Uh, uh, the way HOA works is, uh, you know, <laughs> fucking A. All right. All right. <laughs> the All right. HOA. Yeah, dude. Right. Oh, my what God. What a joke. Yeah. Um, so, back to... You're sitting in your chair. You eventually got your new TV. Got the new TV dialed up. Run how long were you, uh, how long was that? It was like a total of five months total that yeah. I spent on that fucking couch. Maybe, yeah. maybe even a little longer. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was total uncertainty every day. My wife, you know, works and has to go to work every day. And I'm sitting there and just kind of helpless and fucking miserable and pissing in bottles Cover, you know, were just, you collecting unemployment at the time, or no, were you no. still trying to work? I was um, still, working. still doing online coaching and stuff yeah. like that. But a big, uh, so you basically lost your uh, your 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 passion, career, and your fucking yeah, my person, person career. Coaching. Yeah, right. so I, I make a lot of my money. I used, especially back then, I used to make majority of my money through in person coaching at my gym. You know, hey, you had and, like eight to ten clients a day. Would you oh, do yeah. something like that? Yeah, yeah. I was run, I was running pretty busy and doing yeah. pretty well. And then obviously everything just stopped. Like I couldn't go in. So right. I, everything just stopped. And then I pursued the online aspect of it more because I could work from home and work from my phone. Were you doing any online stuff at the time? I was just at a much smaller scale than I okay. am now. Um, I was actually intimidated to take on people online. Right. I, I don't know. I'm not sure why. I just felt it. It just didn't seem, it seemed weird. To no, me you to can do. only, but you, you no, I, um, I, let me know if this is similar for you. I thought about, so I started coaching people online last year and I was thinking about, do we do one-on-one? -on -one? But like when you, when you, when someone comes to you and they want your help, you want to give them the best help possible. And in person, you can only do so much or just like in person is so much cool. Right. Online, so like, you can only do so yeah. Much. Online, you can only do so much and you're like, ah, no, but I really want to fucking help. You know, right. it's kind of like, uh, I, I understand. I, I that. struggled with that at first. Yeah, and I wasn't sure how to balance it. Yeah, and like how how can I give these people the time that they deserve? Right. You know, to actually learn the craft. Or, yeah, and um, you just get better at it. Yeah, you know, just like anything, mm -hmm. taking reps, getting yeah, getting quicker with it, and right. then yeah, getting better at managing your time. You know, it's yeah. very difficult when. I, well, dude, spend, it never they, ends when you fucking ends. phone because when you're when you work on your phone and we're, we're still I'm 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 working toward I'm pretty well handled on that but there was years where i didn't put my phone down ever because it never fucking stopped yeah, you know? yeah. it never stops but i was just curious if um but you you're you, you did take a hit like you're, you're oh yeah financially huge yeah. hit mm -hmm. um huge hit financially and not only that like you know i get paid through my sponsors and things like that they didn't none, none of them stopped paying me obviously they took yeah. care of me um it's not a lot of money though that's just sure. a supplemented income you know yeah. and then i obviously you know do well through my competing because mm -hmm. when, after i do a meet you know, there's a prize um my sponsors kick back and then uh, the influx of the online coaching and or yeah. in person coaching is Shows huge. Up. Right after you know, yeah. you, people want the guy that's putting oh, up the yeah. biggest weight to mm -hmm. coach them. So yeah. and when you, those videos get put out of you squatting something big or yeah. doing something big at a meet, then boom, yeah. everyone's like, "I want that guy to coach me." Right. That yeah. all went away. I, I now the way I promoted myself, and the way I advertised for my business, it's stopped. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, no, that's super true. And like, and I think about that. Um, the way or when I see other people on the internet, they're trying to like run a like do coaching or they're like, how, how do I grow a following? And I'm like, what do you do? Okay. Go be the best at it. People like if, and if you're not the best, like why should people give you their time? Right. You know, or like totally. just, that's just how I feel. And that's how you feel. And, totally. and, but, but like, the, like the harsh reality is whether it's by injury or slow decay, 
right. that fucking goes Move away. away. Yep. And and I think we talked about it. I talked about it with Chad here. Yeah. It's like because he made he just like willingly made that transition. You know he he had worked towards um, getting to the CrossFit Games and he finally went. And then he took twentieth at the CrossFit Games. I would have been motivated to be like, okay, I'm good enough for twentieth. I want to do. Fifth, I want to make fifth right. next year, right. and then right. I, I want to win. But he was like, all right, that's good. I'm gonna go. Just, yeah, just go take a step back and and, and stop trying to be the best. Yeah, but like I, it's hard. Yeah, we, well, we, we're yeah. You and I are like built a little different. Never right, fucking, egos yeah. And, yeah. and that well, so it just goes to show that Chad's just wired a little different than you and I are because mm-hmm. I'm the same way as you. I'm like, well, we got 20th, so we're gonna do better next year yeah. until I get to that number one mm-hmm. spot. And um, it's pretty remarkable when you see someone that can have that kind of self control to yeah. go, okay, I did good. Maybe there's potential for better. But there's also potential to make a lot of money or to yeah. promote and work on my businesses. Yeah. So I need or to do just that. like, oh yeah, that's good enough. That was that was pretty good. I'm like, made it there. I don't have that voice. I kind of wish I did, but right. also you know it, it works out for us. But yeah, you know, for you, if you're not, I, I was forced into coaching basically, yeah. right? Or like, I'm not, that's not true either. No, yeah, I loved coaching, mm-hmm. but I was forced into taking it on full time, right? And yeah, being like well, wait, this is now what I do as mm-hmm. coach. Yeah, and uh, I do enjoy it. I really do. I love it. I uh, hardest thing is just time. You know, you're ch- when you're changing time for dollars, it's tough to do. You know, yeah. and um, what you feel your worth and what other people feel your worth could conf- conflict. And how do you really put a number on it? Right, go off yeah. what other people are doing. Who mm-hmm. knows? But I know that I'm going to have more invested into it. Mm-hmm. So, but I mean, that's not even a fair assessment because I don't know what the other guys are doing. I just feel like I would. I feel like I'm better. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, it's um. Uh, uh, when you, when you, when you have to stop competing eventually, or when you're not the best anymore and you have to take that step back, everybody, everybody, you know, it's tough, tough still to swallow. Yeah. But at least you have that credibility to say like, oh yeah, this is, these are my credentials. Like I right. did this, but now I don't do that anymore, but I could get you there if you want, you know, right. something like that. So I, 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 I was curious, like, and I, and I don't even know myself and, and we're friends, like what is, is there a return to powerlifting for you potentially? Or what is, what is, what is, what does your future as a, as an athlete look like? Right. Um, I do believe if there is a time that will return to powerlifting. Um, I don't think that's in the near future only because of the physical injuries that I've suffered, um, dealing with the back issue. Like, right, uh, yeah. you know, I'm training now, obviously. Sure, yeah. Um, but, uh, I'm not training very hard only because I'm very limited on what I can do. Yeah. Like I, I took, Four fifteen for a ride the other day on squats for a couple sets of ten. Something that's not very hard for me to do, but casual. That's, <laughs> how, that's how I wake up. That's how I have to stretch. I just like, oh man, I gotta get under four fifteen. Or Active I can't, recovery. Yeah, I can't go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, in the actual process of doing it, it felt fine. Like yeah. I, I honestly, I, I was Knee great. I was like, I'm back. You know, I was really? like, yeah. down back. The next day, or I'm not even the next day. That evening, I was at the range shooting. Dude, I couldn't even walk out to change my targets. Yeah. I, cu- I couldn't walk. Like, I, I, you get that weird little movement where it feels like you've gone paralyzed for a quick second. You're like, oh, shit. Yep. Like, I kept getting that, like, continuously. And I was like, okay, maybe I'm not nearly as strong as I thought I was or not my back's not as strong as I thought it was. Back stuff's too. crazy. Or, right? or, you know, like, for, so, uh, you know, even if you do, even if you make the best comeback possible, our bodies can only... Don't hold up so much. so much and so like the risk of of re-injury and stuff like that is is real and it's there and I, you have to consider these things now you know so it's like it's hard for us to take us it's hard for us to step away or something but i was just you know well because like what we talked man. about um our, our tenacity or mm-hmm. actually uh steven crowder covered this the other day on his podcast it was very interesting how he covered it talking about grit and it was like grit isn't necessarily a good thing like we it can be detrimental like yeah you can try hard and come back and keep giving it and like for some people and for some cases that may be positive but it's not just because you're that kind of person it can be used in a negative way for example um i can put 800 pounds on the bar and tell derek to deadlift it and derek is a very tough guy and very gritty he can try all he fucking wants if the if he doesn't have the strength to do it you just can't do it so same thing with what you said with the comeback there's a I need to assess whether or not a comeback makes sense yeah. because I wouldn't do a comeback to come back to be top 10. You know, right. I would be yeah. number one. And um, whether it's in the super heavyweight or lower weight class, yeah, that's trust me, curious. it would more than likely be a lower weight class if I did it. Yeah. Um, I would kn- I would have to know that I can do it and I can be the best before I even pursue right. it, right? And it could and be I, like not three, could be several years of, be. Of, of, of basically starting over again, right. you know? Well, yeah. could, mind you, when I started powerlifting, I had like 10 years of training experience prior, mm-hmm. so I started right. in very good shape and very strong. Now I'm in very not good shape and not right. very strong and it would be trying to rebuild. So again, I'm only 31, um, so 
you know, Stan Efferding, big hero of mine, I talk about him often. He didn't break any of his records or set his records until he was 43 years old. No shit. Yeah. Really? Yep. Oh, Lord. So, Owen, um, next hey, year's man, your year, man. Hope. <laughs> Keep hope. Rock- oh, you know, who's, you know who started working out? Oh, Owen. shit. Owen, no, yeah. no, I'm sitting in a room with... Uh, so, <laughs> Owen started running. Yeah. Um... Uh, you started running. I did. did I, you? Dude, yeah. yeah. I saw that on we're Instagram. Runners? The other day. Yeah, we're I runners. saw that on Instagram. Fuck like, yeah. tell what what is this story? Like, right. what, did you just wake up? You're like, I'm gonna fucking go for a job. <laughs> right. Um, so I played college football and everything. I was always in good shape my entire life. And I've always prided myself on being able to run and do things like that. Right. You know what I mean? And in fact, I actually do enjoy running. It's about getting in a good stride and it's a good like pace. A do, you go, do you go do barefoot? It. I do. I was You're like, a barefoot yeah, runner? Yeah. Wow. Brandon's just like a barefoot guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm always like, yeah. barefoot. <laughs> right, yeah. Must be nice having fucking fucking size 15s made out of leather yeah. you know leather i have super soft foot yeah i got a, i got a really soft size eight over here you know like a rock yeah. is gonna dominate my shit man. Like, yeah. Jen, jenny my wife she when our first time running she tried to go barefoot with me she's like what, what how do you oh, do this it's like yeah. pine cones and no, shit i'm just is, running over this is this is fred flintstone right yeah. you know this i have is, a huge yeah. <laughs> yeah dude yeah uh, so we go down the street to the park and um do like jog and couple laps on, on a good jog you know out of breath hurting you right know? so mind you we're both kind of not in great shape so it's not hard to achieve that yep <laughs> and then um one thing i really enjoy doing is sprints i love sprinting um football i was a very good sprinter i ran a four five nine in high school i ran a four six four in college weighing at 260 plus pounds so i've always been very fast north and south Side to side agility, terrible. Don't right. have shifty hips. Right. But north and south, I, I can. Do Don't that. have shifty hips, but I'll run you the fuck over. That's yeah, <laughs> that's how I played ball too. Or run you I was, down. I was running back in college. Yeah, I know. So uh, that's how that, that's how that goes. So we started just doing um, interval interval sprinting, uh, forty yard sprints, twenty yard sprints, timed rest, things like that. And I'm just improving on. Right now, I'm improving on the overall vol- volume. So each day we add one to two sets of twenty. Well, you've been running every day, not just the one time. Uh, pretty much every three days a week oh no shit wow yeah. cool nice. man and then increasing the in, increasing the volume and then i'll once i get to a, a volume that i want to be at then i'll start reducing rest times to increase the intensity so you know for example if i'm doing a 30 second rest i would try to advance that by doing a 25 second rest the next time to a yep. 20 second rest and just doing small increments like that you're gonna that's it's no different than weight training you know than powerlifting. so if you can apply the same principles of strength into cardio respiratory it's very easy to do yeah um and I actually, I, I love it. It's a new, it's a newfound love that I have and, uh, formulating programs and coming up with things that make sense yeah. and then, uh, testing them and then proving upon them. Uh, I really enjoy it, you know, and I don't know if you guys follow a uh, real world tactical, you know, Tony. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I'm a big fan of Tony and uh, I've been interviewing him on podcast. I love the guy. Anyways, I watch a lot of his videos and his training and my God, it's, if you're not impressed by that, I don't know what to tell you, but I know no, Tony's Tony's workouts go like he's up at the whiteboard and then he's like, he's got like probably like 10 helpers. And okay. he gives him a briefing. He's like, okay, you, you're going to light me on fire. And then you, <laughs> you're going to kick me in the chest. And then I'm going to pick up this tire. And I'm going to run a half a mile. And then I'm right? going to shoot at and you then, guys. Yeah. And then I'm going to shoot at you three, but don't let me hit you. All right. <laughs> and then like, things like, dude, he's one of those, Seriously. his shit's crazy. But this dude, so he's got to be like 250, 275 I think he's or something like 270. Yeah. He's yeah. So he's like strong three. as fuck. But this dude, yeah, he's, he's, he's the, uh, he's like the ultimate soldier type he's yeah. like big and big and strong like well conditioned man condition, and I, but but athletic. i but i think you know the vid, like not to discredit his fitness but not like an endurance you can't be an endurance guy with that that size no. you know so you can do like those like those you know 5 minute red line workouts and things like that but his fucking agility stamina speed it's fucking crazy. Impressive. So he's actually he's a he's a one of the sponsored first form athletes. Okay, as well. Yeah, yeah. Tony Santamont. Yes. Right. Yeah. So real world tactical. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Incredible guy and his wife girlfriend Heba. She's in, in insane shape. My wife's a big fan yeah. of hers and watches all her videos. So and he's older too. Oh, he's and older. and he did a he did a powerlifting meet like two years ago or a year ago or something like uh, that. I, so. He's like a retired cop. Yeah. Then, mm-hmm. you know, now he's a he was a guy. Marine and then uh, like uh, a cop in Miami, yep. I think. He used to do drug yeah. bust, DA stuff. Yeah. And then now he has his training programs where yeah. he basically trains cops and people mm-hmm. like that and yeah. military like people. Um, but yeah, you know, he he, did, he got into strength and training and was doing a powerlifting meet. I'm not sure if he actually went through and followed through and did the meet. I don't know. I can't though. remember if he got injured or not. I remember I remember working out with him when he was like a few weeks out or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So on all those lines, that's where I'm trying to emulate more of my training style mm-hmm. is to be more athletic and to be able, like I, I was 
you know, I trained for performance before, you know, but it was for one rep performance. Now I'm training for performance a little differently and more, yeah. being more active and more healthy. Like there's three pillars of, of fitness, you know, strength, size, and conditioning. Right now I'm kind of working on all three, but not focused on either one. This is, this, I, I love that you're talking about this because this is one of the things I have it written right here. Yep. <laughs> what, what are you one written? of the things I, 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 you, you've helped, you helped me with this. So when I, when I, um, when I came to you, and I said, I'm going to get into powerlifting. I had been my whole, I hope my whole life I devoted more towards, um, conditioning and aesthetics. Like my strength was decent, you know, it was just it was a byproduct a little, of the other yeah, two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, I never, I never focused on strength and it was super hard for me mentally. It's like, Hey, I want to go powerlifting. He's like, okay, if you want to be as strong as possible, you're going to have to give that other shit up. Hey, so aesthetics like, gotta go. Yeah. So it's like, and the cardio work, like you can only, you know, you can only be in such good shape and then have maximal outforce of power, right? So yep. you're, there's a trade-off. And that was one thing I had to convey to Derek was, hey, you're uh, you're not going to look the way you, you want right. to look. So you're, that's, you know. yeah, so that's what, like what I wanted to ask. Like, I just wanted you to talk about prioritizing goals. Yeah. And actually, we, we put a video up of this in the Whiter group and yeah. it was, and it was, it was a lot of the lessons that you taught me and I was, I was, it was very cool. So I was, I just wanted to ask, like, do you believe in, in doing one thing at a time so like, you can be your best at it or... Um, block periodization training, basically yeah. how I taught you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, uh, I, I train block periodization training style. Um, what does that mean exactly? Like, um, uh, like I have certain blocks that I focus on certain things in those blocks to have an end goal, but you don't necessarily focus on the end goal. You achieve these blocks, which then the end goal will be achieved in the, in the long run. Right. Right. So like, uh, for my training, for example, like as a power lifter, um, hypertrophy isn't necessarily important, um, especially when you're in prep, but in your off season, it should be because a bigger muscle always has the potential to be a stronger muscle. So just because your muscle is bigger doesn't necessarily mean it's stronger, but the bigger one can achieve more strength than the smaller one. If that makes sense. So in your off season, you want to be getting as big muscular as possible. And then we get, then get into a strength phase. Then we make those big muscles nice and hard to produce more strength. So that's, so that's basically the gist of it. So if I'm pursuing size, you know, and strength, like you, you kind of got to pick one. Like you can do all three, but you, it's not optimal. Like, yeah, 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 you can do all three, but you'll never be as good as you can be at one of them. But the thing is, and, and you know this because you work with people as a coach, like uh, it, uh, a lot of people lack commitment because, okay, so I came to you and I probably had, um, probably like eight abs at the time and abs are important to me. Like being lean and mean is kind of my thing. And like, that's my, what, you know, the army taught me that that's the, that's the standard, you know, but you said, Hey, do you want to be as strong as possible? Then you need to fucking eat and you need to quit giving a shit what you look like. And you got to rest. That was, that was Yeah. Oh, the output was so different. Right. Yeah. You know, See, I went from working out twice a day, six days a week to working out four, four times a week, one session. And he was like, he was like, your, your training now is, 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 you know, you work out, but then you sit at home and then you eat and then you stop caring about what you look like. And I started to get, I got, dude, I, you know, I got fat, but like powerlifting fat, it was, it was, we, did, we did exactly what we needed to do, but so many people do that for two weeks, freak out, backtrack. So like, they're like, uh, they tell all their friends, Hey, I'm going on a bulk. Fuck. Yeah. Three days later. Hey, I'm, I'm cutting now. Right. I'm cutting. And they and they do that, and they never accomplish shit. Yep. And so I think it's better to spend six months and get fat and get strong and do something and learn what that's like and, the, and then accomplish something. And be like, okay, now, you know, you have to accomplish something. But it, totally. people lack the commitment there. Yeah. The problem with people is that they try to emulate. Or, the problem with people is a lot of problems. But one mm -hmm. of the problems is with fitness is that they try to, they do these very small mesocycles where they're like, oh, I want to get big. And then so they work on getting big for two weeks, three weeks. And then like, they freak out when right. they start getting a little right. fat. Like, hey, if you want to gain size and strength, be okay with some, with some fat being added on. And that's right. like doing powerlifting for me was I, I grew – big time mentally because I was I was like mentally fucked up for my whole life about so overly concerned and overly self-conscious with my looks and and then I you know I was like oh my god I'm fat I'm fat I'm fat I thought I was fat in 2015 and I look at pictures back then I'm like what the fuck I will never look that good again you know <laughs> <laughs> and then I actually got fat and I was still happy you know, like it, it wasn't the end of the world. Well, if you had your leg, you would have been an over 200 pounder. Right. No, dude, I, well, I was you over 210. 200. Yeah, yeah, I know. But I mean, you would have been like a 242er. I know. Yeah. <laughs> five, six, two, 
five six two forty is pretty pretty thick. That's a thick. thick boy. Yeah, but it was it was fun, and I learned a lot about um, like a little cub. Right. Yeah, but I learned a lot. Of, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I learned a lot about um, um, commitment and strength and things like that. But um, so, we, um, uh, what do you say to somebody when they when they when they hire you on and they're like, hey, I want to get strong and get lean. I want to I want to you know g- build my uh, PRs, but also stay fit and things like that. They, do you tell them to pick one? What do you, what do you tell them? Depends on the person. Like, yeah. um, if it's someone that's legitimately strong and like has legit potential, I'm going to explain to them, Hey man, let me explain this to you. Cause I don't think you understand how strength works and, I, and I'll explain it to them and then I'll let them decide. Is this, do you still want to hire me? Is this something you still want to pursue with my style of training? Cause it's going to be different than what you're used to. Or if they're, they don't really know what they're talking about because you get those all the time. Oh, I'll do whatever it takes. Okay. Well, you need to eat 10 meals a day. Well, that's crazy. Okay. So you but won't my, do whatever my, it takes. But my belly hurts. I'm right. Like, Welcome to the fucking club. Right. Dude. Yeah. Or yeah. They'll, they'll do whatever it takes, but you, you program three three squat sessions in a week and then they're like, what the fuck? Dude? Like, and I'm like, I thought you do whatever yeah. it takes. Like, you know, so it all depends on the person. But for the most part, I try to explain to them like, okay, well, do you want to be your strongest or do you want to be strong and be conditioned? Because we can do that but you're not going to be your strongest. You know what I mean? And uh, typically I think that, I, I don't know, I like to think I'm pretty good at explaining it to where they can understand and then decide. If they're just a dumbass. There's the dumbass. And then yeah. we'll do what I think is best for them. And then usually they don't last long anyways, right? The, the way we kind of explained it in the Whiter group is we had like three categories. It was strength, conditioning, and aesthetics. And then we gave people 10 tallies. It's like put the tallies where you want them. You know, and like this becomes your focus. And if it's like, if for me, powerlifting, I put all 10 in strength. And so like my training, my lifestyle, my eating, it was all for That's strength. Change. Yeah. And, and it was, and it, I wasn't going to live like that forever, but I committed to that. And I, I, you know, I did a meet. I ended up, I, I didn't, I didn't accomplish what I set out to accomplish, but we had twins and things got kind of um, weird, but like I definitely stuck with it and I didn't skip a meal I didn't often skip workouts unless life came up or something so. and we oh. didn't quit. Yeah. We, yeah you never we, like, we, we went full commitment right. and yeah. I was like, and I was like, this has an expiration date, but I'm going to fucking see it through. Cause, cause that's what you got to see your shit through. Don't be wishy washy about fitness. Cause you'll never accomplish anything. Yep. And then when you don't accomplish anything, you're going to feel like a fucking loser. Yep. And then when you feel like a fucking loser, you're going to be a loser. Yep. <laughs> you know, <laughs> So it's just accomplish any, something, even if you don't, you know, do something for six months. Be like, oh, I'm, I'm just doing this for six months. The problem is, is that people have a hard time seeing the end goal when they're dealing with it. And what right, they're going yeah. Through. And, you know, top a little bit on what we're talking about, though, with like, especially with strength blocks or things like that, where people want to win the meet on that workout. I'm like, that's not how it works. Like, you win or you, you improve through consistency. And through, you know, that adaption slow and takes time. So if you think you're just going to go out there and bang it hard and then be done, like it doesn't work that way. Or, or and the, the way that I program is very sub-maximal training. So sometimes like people, will, you know, they'll have a day and they'll be like, yeah, that, that, the weight was really easy. I went heavier. I'm like, well, you got to deadlift in three days, dude. Yeah, like no, you're not yeah. thinking about. Right. A, dude, but and, like that's super hard to fucking, it's super hard to learn that lesson as a dude in your 20s. And right. I'm, I'm really good at that now. And, um, like, so actually I'm, I, my, I'm back in training and that's why we're drinking water. And so well, yeah. you went hard last night, but I'm, but I'm, I'm just off the bottle yeah. for the next we had a pool party yesterday, 14 <laughs> weeks now. Room. Yeah. Um, and, uh, 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 shoot what I totally lost my train of thought. What was I? I'm still thinking about the video. Like, that's probably one of the, f- my favorite videos that, that we filmed was your explanation of the 10 tallies and put them wherever you want. Cause I had mm-hmm. never, I had never heard it explained like that where, you know, you can have two of the three, but you can't really have all three, like because right. the eating's different you, for each. Well, one. you can have all three, but it's going to be at a low level, right? Not going to be at a high level, right. right? Yeah, if you want, if you want to win, you got to fully commit. But uh, so I remember what I was thinking, like being back in training. I do have easy days, right? And it's like you know, fucking enjoy those easy. Yes. Then don't go, don't go off program. Trust your coach. Right. Like for you, I I committed to your plan one hundred percent. That first, uh, go. Uh, for about a year, I just went full. Yeah. I trusted your you plan. Got strong, yeah. I got, I got very strong. You know, right. yeah. Um, and so now, like, I'm back in training, and and I have, I've had the same CrossFit coach for five years. Um, I, th- I thought I wasn't. My my competition was supposed to be November 21st, so I thought I was going to start training September 1st, but that competition got bumped up a few <laughs> months, so training started last week. Right. And uh, you know, uh, uh, Jake and I, uh, 
we talked about the plan and things like that. And, and he, he makes the plan and I do the work. Right. And I, and what's on paper I do. And if it's fucking easy, I do that. And I shut the fuck up because yep. I know the pain is coming. Right. He's you letting know? you rest because like, he knows yeah. what's coming mm-hmm. in three but days. This is a, a, a big sticking point for dudes. They can't stick to the program. Yep. You know, the, the coach, the coach is thinking about, um, uh, the, goal that the you next, the you next 16, achieve, right. they got a 16 week plan and right. you're in week two on a Tuesday. And all you're thinking about is Tuesday. Right. And that's what, you know, one of the things I used to get super, my mental game as a competitor was weak as fuck because if my competition was on June 1st and if by January 21st, I wasn't ready for that competition, I just beat myself. Like I'm, I'm, I'm fucking suck. What's wrong with me? Right. And, and actually it was, it was working with you and powerlifting learning that phase building right. approach. And now it's, and now it's super liberating. Cause now I just sit back. I mean, my workouts are hard as fuck, but I just, I, I do them. I do my best. And then I don't worry about nothing. It's like, cause we're developing a product, yep. you know, and that product will be ready on August 29th. Right. At the end of it the assembly line. It won't be ready August 27th. Nope. Okay. Like right. the, the release date for this product is August 29th. Right. You know? <laughs> and that's what makes strength um, coaching very difficult to do. Um, obviously, balancing personality. And online, they go off fucking program on you. You're not there to see them. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then, uh, um, yeah. oh, yeah. So that's why strength training or strength coaching is very hard to do because it's like, I don't need to make you strong today. I have to, we have to make you strong on May 18th. Right. You know, and then, so how do we make sure that you're at your absolute pinnacle on that day? It's very difficult to do, especially when we have an insubordinate fucking athlete. How do we keep you healthy? How right. do we make you how grow? Do how do we make you keep, yeah. We need to survive to here, first of all. Yep. That's number one. You know, we need to get there unhurt, unscathed. Right. And then we need to perform optimally, you know, and there's, you know, we have to balance fatigue, fitness. Um, you know, there's a lot of things to balance and to manage throughout that. It's very stressful to do. That's why that's another thing too, where and it irritates me when you someone asks for your rates and you tell them they're like, "Oh my god, that much." I'm like, well, "There's a lot that I'm doing for you, man." Right. You and and like, how important is this goal? Right. To you? Right. How important exactly. is this goal? Because if it's important, like, what are you willing to pay? Because I guarantee you, my rates are like a quarter of that. Right. You know? right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you also aren't paying somebody for, for like the time that they're spending on it while you're paying for the experience the years well. right. of mm-hmm. knowledge gaining that, that goes into being able to help you achieve that right. goal. Like for example, it may take me an hour to develop a program for yep. somebody, a custom program for someone, but that's because I've done this thousands and thousands of times over and over. Right. Again. And I know and you've how you're been refining for the last yes. 15 years. Totally. And not only are you good personally, but you've worked with some of the best coaches. So Absolutely. you've learned. Yeah. So like the expertise yeah so um it is funny when people complain and well not only that like yeah. when you hire me you're hiring my contacts right and my my ability to achieve to to acquire knowledge right yeah. so if i come across something that i don't fully understand or a situation i don't know i have access to everybody that i need to have access like to the top smart level guys. motherfuckers top yeah same. It's not so, your cousin yeah. eddie who no. read a magazine article yeah, one yeah, time yeah that has a buddy that can bench something and told me this would work <laughs> yeah. no i literally have What'd the best do? in the world yeah. that i have access to yeah which is very unique in our time and which is a beautiful thing about social media yeah um is that it does allow everyone to connect and to share knowledge and to um, make everyone better athletes. That's why kids are getting stronger. You know, yeah. there's more knowledge out there. There, there's also there's no longer like, can you squat a thousand pounds? No, you can. We, it's been proven. Like ten guys, I've never. Right, you can do it. So, you know, three years ago, that that was an uncertainty. Yeah. You know, no one had squat a thousand yet raw. Um, uh, what, what do you do? You know, so a, a question that I get that I get a lot. Um, and it at this point, it just it it drives me crazy. But this so this will be fun to see what you say. Um, people people like to write me and they say I want to get bigger. I can't grow, no matter what I do. I eat, but I'm I'm a hard gainer. What do I do? I can't. I Brandon, I want to get big, but I can't. I eat all day, but I am a hard gainer. Yeah, I I, I get those ones. <laughs> I'm a hard. Yeah. Everybody's a fucking hard gainer. Right, Sorry, I'll let you answer. Right, yeah, yeah, I right. know. Yeah, um, I get that one often. Like, uh, I, I, like I, you don't even know, bro. I eat so much, and I'm like, no, you don't. Like, there, this isn't a guessing game. This is science. You are burning more calories than you are consuming. You are not eating enough to grow. Like, oh, I eat so much. I'm like, I promise you, you're not. Or okay, let's say you are eat twice as much as you're eating right now and yeah. you will grow. I promise you, you will grow. It's not, this isn't a fucking guessing game. 
I swear to God, you're going to grow if you eat twice as much as you're eating every day. And they don't understand that what this comes back to what I'm saying, consistency. They think they can go slam that one big meal because they were motivated at that time, and then they don't eat no, shit the rest that, of the day that, or the rest of the week. At first, that the, the first meal of the day, is, the day is the easiest. The first day of training is the easiest. easiest. It's, it's, it's like fucking five days in, and you're just sweating, slaving over it. Like, there was times... Um, when I was, you know, because I was working with you, and we're like, all right, Derek, you need to gain 30 pounds to compete in this weight class. I was like, fuck, dude, that's a lot of weight to gain. So but we got on, like, so I basically. We're not going to gain it all at once. Yeah, right. We're going to gain a couple pounds a week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I yeah, I had to increase my calories. And it's like, fuck, dude, that shit hurts. Yeah. And, that, and it becomes work. It's it total. becomes work. And there was times that I was, like, sitting over my food. So at night, I would eat uh, the Brandon Special uh, two packs of ramen. And then uh, like two to three burgers, about a pound of, of ground beef, you know, and I'd eat the meat and then I'd sit there and I'm sweating and I'm still full because I just ate three hours ago and I'm sweating. And I'm like, Stacy, I can't do this. No way. And she would shoot, she, she, like there were times she was like, Derek, you have to, like, you don't have a choice. Like you want, and she'd be like, do you want to accomplish this? I'd be like, yeah. She's like, then you have to eat that. I'm like, you're right. You have to think yeah. about your food as the same as taking reps in the gym. Yeah. Like, uh, attack that shit, right. you know? suck it up. And these people lie to us about what they eat. They're like, the they're like, and, 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 or like, and I like what you said. And so what I say, cause people are like, I eat a horse. I'm like, well, fucking eat two horses, eat two horses. Right. you know, like, I don't know. And, and, it, and they, they, they think you're being short with them or being a dick, but it's the fucking truth. Yeah. They're like, I can't gain weight. I eat all day. I'm like, well, you need to eat more then. I wake like, up in the middle of the night Seriously, if you put the proper amount of food in your body, it will grow. Totally. It'll respond. And, you know, if you want to build lean muscle, that takes a long time. But if but you if you want to you know uh, like rapidly increase your strength and you're okay with getting a, a, a little bit of powerlifting fat, that's fucking easy to do, man. Yep. But like, you know, yeah, the, it's the, but it hurts. It's when, when, when I say easy, I mean um, simple to understand. We how understand to how to do it. But it is right. painful and right. uncomfortable, yeah. and they're like they're like I eat so much it hurts. I'm like yeah. Yeah, welcome to the fucking right. life. The, the, <laughs> what to do is easy. Doing it is hard. Mm -hmm. right. So, yeah, it, how do you get bigger? Eat more. Okay, Easy. Okay, But actually eating more is very difficult to do. And then, like, the main thing is the consistency. You, you don't just get to eat big one day and think that's going to work. You have to do it every single, not five days a week, yeah. seven days a week. Mm -hmm. You got to continue to do it. You got to force it. You got to do it. And that's, you got to wake up earlier and to eat more. You have to go to bed. You have to maybe wake up in the middle of the night to eat. When I was... When I'd be in prep, mm -hmm. you know, I'd, I'd eat almost 10,000 calories every single day. Now, yeah. if you ever eat 10,000 calories in a day, that's not too difficult to do one time. Right. Do it again the next day. Right. And yeah. the next day. And the next day. And the next day. And, and like your workouts are definitely tough, but your output isn't, you're working out four times a week and, and, and once, and like you're burning a shit ton of, but your output isn't yet like, so it's a lot of resting calories. Yeah. It's a lot of calories just sitting in there waiting for their turn to get fucking uh, yeah, build yeah, that kinetic energy. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, so painful as fuck. That's a big thing that a lot of people don't understand either that I have to try to convey to guys. Um, I don't deal with it so much with my online guys because they're younger and things like that and they want rest or they want to they want to do a lot of work and they can handle a lot of work when they're younger. But then when I get an older guy, a little seasoned or very strong guy, there's a huge J curve on how the system works on recovery and things like that. When you get bigger, that it's harder to recover. When you get stronger, it's harder to recover. So if you're big and strong, like I was, very difficult to recover. Requires a lot of time. Um, and what I mean by that, like, it, it's very extreme, guys. Like, um, there's no going out to do anything. Like, uh, if someone invited me to go somewhere, we couldn't because I physically could not walk or cover that distance comfortably. Or we'd be like, oh, that's three meals we have to bring. Let's just stay home, you know? And, right. And, um, yeah, you, you, you have to sacrifice everything to be the best. And I, I did it. And, um, it's it was difficult to do, but it's achievable. If I can do it, anyone can do it. And to to be clear, and, and you said it, but that that's the that's the championship mentality where it's full dedication. We're not asking everybody to have that level of, of dedication, but that's but that's what it is, you know. And and if you can just do, and if you can do, you don't have to sacrifice that much if you don't want to be number uh, one, one of the world's best yeah, you know? not, right. but you have to it's still it's still going to take work and dedication and discipline and it's uncomfortable accomplishing um things but you know what also is uncomfortable not accomplishing anything ever yep. you know <laughs> so it's totally. like, and i think that's worse i think that's worse i would rather have a tummy ache because i'm working towards my goals and things like that but um it's it's funny when you mentioned um the the older clients and how difficult it is to recover so like um, I've been working with the same CrossFit coach for almost six years 
And so six years ago, I was 28, you know, hey, and I was like, fucking was much go, go. well, I, like my, my patience wasn't there. And so I was like, no, we got to work more. We got to work more. We got to do more now. We got to do more now. And actually in, I think it was uh, 2016, I was supposed to face Derek Carver um, in Rush Club. And that was, we were going to do a one-on-one duel. And that was, uh, Carver and I needed to duke it out to see who was, the better CrossFit athlete or, you know, like I will never compete with him in strength. And I, I have my wheelhouse and he has his wheelhouse, you know, but we were both kind of in the CrossFit world and we were supposed to, um, it was, it was, it was, it was set. It was in Florida, but, uh, I went so hard. I did way too much work, um, and didn't, uh, value recovery enough and things like that. I got sick, you know, I got tonsillitis. I fucking worked myself to unhealth, you know? Yep. And, but now, <laughs> so this training cycle, my coach, he, he knows my mentality and he thinks, he thinks I still have that mentality. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> oh, no, I'm not like, that dude, guy. Like, I'm, a little I'm, smarter I'm, now. I'm way more patient. I'm way smarter. And honestly, I don't think I fucking recover as well as I, I'm getting, I'm, I'm only 34, but I'm not 26 anymore. You, you, like, you, dude, I, I need that recovery. I can't, I used to want to work hard Monday through Friday, two hard training sessions a day. And now I'm like, Hey, Wednesday, I want a one active recovery workout in the morning and that's it. Cause I need, I can go hard Monday, Tuesday, but back when I was going hard Monday through Friday, my Monday would start great. Tuesday would be, my performance would be a little lower. Wednesday was a little lower by Friday. It was just about survival. It right. wasn't about doing good. Right. It was just about survival. It's like, man, there's gotta be a better way that we can, like, if we have the time, we have 15 weeks you know, um, it's funny because it's actually concerns full circle. What I was saying earlier on um, with guys, especially younger guys, it's everything's so quick. Like you were, you were doing your meso cycles in a whole week. Like you were pushing it that whole week and then recovering and then it started next week. And as you get older, you're realizing, wait, hold on. We can plan a month yeah, and we can peak for the month. And, and physically, yeah. as you get older, you cannot keep up with that. Like physically, it doesn't matter how tough your mind is. Your body has a say, right. you know, and I'm just listening to my body and I'm t- trying to tell him like, Hey man, I don't think I became a pussy overnight. I just I don't think I recover quite as fast as I well, used to. I'll I'll, be, I'll just going <laughs> to say I have definitely become a pussy as I got older. Okay. When I was twenty eight, uh, there was a too many just, screws loose. You just loose. get more patient. You're All like, right. hey man, we got time. I don't need to and push like, we're, my we're knees working. This we're working hard. hard. We're working hard, but it's all you know. I was like, I want to stay healthy. Yeah. Fifteen weeks is a long time to train uh, for a competition and stay healthy, injury free. And like the last rush club I did, I had tore like, or partially tore my terrace minor. Yep. And I wasn't able to do, you know, that, that, that event had muscle ups and toe to bar in it. And I couldn't do a pull up for like five weeks before that competition. And I was deadlifting. I could only deadlift 135 with Versa grips. Cause I couldn't double even, overhand, right? Yeah. Double overhand. That was, that was why well, you couldn't engage your lats mm-hmm. pulling back. So that's why you had to use the Versa grips just to let yes. your hands just so be this, anchors hanging on to. So this is like coming into this competition, uh, this training cycle, it's like, Hey, we got the time. Let's do it as smart as possible. Right. As fucking smart as, and that means or like, well, like, well, and well, you, we also know the competition too. And yeah. We know that Derek <laughs> can perform at 80% and still yeah. wipe the fucking floor. Well, that's, that's <laughs> like my off season is, 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 even when I'm not training, I'm always training, you know, yeah. and I always, always, right. always, I'm always, if I'm my off season, I'm training for when I'm training next. Yeah, you your know? standby so. mode is what a lot of people are doing, getting ready for a competition. Yeah, dude, that's, we've almost like ruined ourselves because of this. Like, yeah, I, that's I, what I, I was I trying enjoy, to. Talk. I can't enjoy an off season. I like, was, I was trying. I know, and so actually, like in it, uh, we were saying uh, last week on the show is like I, I thrive in this environment though. Like all of a sudden, everything like I have a focus and structure. I have a purpose. Yeah. Yeah, that's why you did great in the military. You're, you're yeah, structure. and I, I just I, know, I think I thrive in competition. It's stressful. I want, you know, like I have, but I like working through those moments of doubt that it makes you grow, you yep. know, it's, it's just, just to kind of top on what with this real quick on how we kind of drive ourselves crazy with this. Something I encourage everyone to do, um, especially competitors, uh, after you've done your competition, you've done your meet, you achieve that goal or whatever it was, even if it was just that competition, once you do it, I just, I recommend the next month do something different. Now yeah. it doesn't, you don't need to be doing it for like to be the best at it or anything like that, but something that you enjoy doing, whether it's something like you play handball or something like that, stop making everything prioritized around your gym training and then do something fun. Still gym train, but make it a secondary thing. Like, no, I'm going to go run 
or I'm going to go play tennis. And then when I'm done playing tennis, then I'm going to go hit the weights, you know? And right. then, so that way the weights aren't the primary focus. The other thing is that's fun. And then that, that mental break from doing your same shit every day is so invaluable and so huge. Had I had done that throughout my career, I probably would have had a longer career. Yeah. You know? And not that my career is over, but I was right. just saying I would have had a longer career from where I'm at right now. Yeah. No, that's, um, I, I, uh, I did, I did pretty well at that last year. I took, I like, so I didn't have, I didn't have a competition last year. So I was still working out and I'm not good at, um, uh, staying sober and productive without the kind of purpose that same fitness and competition gives me. But I, I spent, so I, I kind of made our work, uh, a, a, a focus for me and like I, what we do like we started the whiter group last year and we put more time into um, putting out content with the overall objective of of helping people accomplish their goals and things like that and like yeah so I, I, I've learned that lesson now finally at 34 years old it took me a long time that's a that's a good like that's a good point and I was actually watching um shoot it was a uh, the Ronnie Coleman documentary good and when he was talking about how he when he was a coming up bodybuilder he was stressing himself out so much. He was stressing himself out to the point that he was doing worse. He was so concerned on um, the competition and stuff. And, and some other top bodybuilder was like, hey, man, we're all going up to the room to have pizza and to fucking drink vodka. Do you want to come do that with us? He's like, no, I can't. We're bodybuilders. But he, he, he was like, they, they taught him a lesson. He's like, no, come up here and fucking relax, dude. Enjoy your fucking life and you'll do better. Right. You know, yeah. so that's a good. Like you're, you, don't, you don't have to be in bodybuilding prep 24-7. Right, yeah, no, and it, and it actually, but the 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 funny trick is, it it actually makes you a better athlete and competitor and things like that. Well, Taking that time, think about think about just in terms of sports, like the kids that excelled, like in football or whatever, they probably played multiple sports. You mm -hmm. know, they almost all of them did. All the you know, any, ask any NFL guy, and they probably played basketball, football, baseball. They they played every sport when they were kids because they were just athletic. And then that having all those different things and then firing your muscles in different ways to to work for those different sports is going to make you better at your sport right because now you're more well versed and you're, <laughs> you're more nap well time's over <laughs> time to wake up <laughs> dude, dude that's my alarm sometimes it's a little startling yeah, yeah it's gonna <laughs> shit out of me but i'm jumpy <laughs> <laughs> yeah no that that uh, the balance thing is good and actually um it's funny the uh Right before I started powerlifting with you, it's because I, I won that Rush Club in 2017. And, I, and then for like three months, all I did was drink all day and write songs. It was the first time in my life that I sat down and, and just played music all the time, you know? And I was like, yeah, oh, well, shit, I gained 10 pounds here. Let's Fuck. let's put it to use. Like, you <laughs> right. know, yeah. Powerlifting, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, just another thing to talk on what you said about with sobriety with training. That's another thing, too, though, guys. Like, if, you're, if you truly believe, like, or you're truly, your goal is truly to be the best you possibly can, Drinking during a prep is not going to achieve that or yeah. help you achieve that at all. I would completely go cold turkey. Yep. Through my, I would smoke pot, but I would want to drink a single anything, not even an ounce, because you know you're dehydrating every little capillary yeah. in your body when you drink. Yeah, that obviously isn't going to return for good muscle recovery or muscle gain. So mm -hmm. if you're truly serious about it, you, you should probably kick the bottle. Yeah, no, that's and that's 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 my fucking approach. And and, and you know I like. Uh, people know that I enjoy beer and things like that, but so I'm what I got 14 weeks of prep left and I'm yep. off the bottle except Stacy's birthday is July 9th. And so what, you know, if we, I'll give myself a night there, it's, it's, it. And if I, and so it's, it's, it's the balance thing. It's like, so I'm staying off the bottle cause it, it really does fuck you up for a couple days. You know, your performance is a little mm -hmm. less, it's not necessary. But if I lose the competition because I celebrated my wife's birthday, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> right. okay. You know, right. and I don't think that'll be why I lose the competition right. or something, but it, say that's the one deciding you're, you're not factor. Lose competition, yeah. Though. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's because <laughs> of that beer you had three Thursdays ago. Well, but yeah. But staying off. Staying I try off. to, I try to tell that to people too. in their program, like, uh, when you're on the platform, you missed that last deadlift. You're going to fucking remember, man, that one day I didn't do those two extra down sets. Mm -hmm. I was a little bitch or I just quit and didn't do my accessory work, this whole prep or whatever it is. Like, don't, don't let that be a probability. Like when I went to Australia, like we covered earlier, like every single workout, every single rep, every single set, I just remembered, I just thought about what it would be like to be overseas on that platform. And I think, man, I didn't take that set very seriously. Yep. Maybe that's why I wasn't strong enough. Right. And uh, just don't leave any fucking doubt. And like, I've had meets where I've, had that happen where I've missed something and I'm like, man, there was that day I should have fucking did this. I think or. that's a mindset that you progress towards mm -hmm. through 
failing at oh, oh, totally. like so we can sit here and we, we can we can try to encourage you to take your shit seriously now you have to learn the hard but, way. yeah mm-hmm. that's taking responsibility for your failure like True. instead of trying to cast blame on like on like oh it was you know this reason big no no no, no. i fucked up yeah. it's, i i i didn't win this because i didn't do the work yeah. like but, this but over over that. time of doing that like competing and looking back and like i fluffed here i fluffed here i fluffed yeah. here your goal becomes so important to you that all those other things, it's not it's not hard for me to not drink. I fucking love, I love, drink. like, when, when I haven't been in training the last year and a half, I drink on Fridays and Saturdays, yep. you know? And, but but now it's it's not difficult for me to not drink because I know what I'm doing, and I, and I was like, I, um, you know, that it makes me happy. I'm on a, I'm on a happy path. Same, you, you same just, with me. You just yeah. get there. You, you start to take your goals so seriously, and it just becomes easy, and this is all the same it's the, this is relative. This is kind of a conversation I have to people about controlling their diet. You know, like af- after a while, after a while living with discipline, you know, it's, it's pretty easy like to, to not crave a donut because the, um, the satisfaction and joy that you get in life from doing the right thing just becomes, it, it tastes better, you yep. know, <laughs> like doing the right thing tastes better than uh, a donut. And that's not to say like, I'll never eat a donut or something, but you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, totally. you know, it's a progression. So I guess uh, one of the things, the lessons there is like, if you're currently in the early days of the progression, don't be too hard on yourself. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like you're going to get there if you keep going, you know, right. if you don't quit, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to get to this. Um, I think we're at a pretty mature level. Um, of, of fitness and competition and things like that. But it's because it's all the we, dumbass shit we did yeah, over the years. Uh-huh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. I, there's been times where I'm like, man, I wish I had this knowledge when I was younger. I'm like, wait, what am I talking about? I did. Yeah. Everyone told me you, oh, you're yeah. going too hard. You're yeah. going to fucking hurt yourself. Yeah. You're going to fucking die. If you keep at this pace, everyone did. And I didn't listen. Yeah. And then here I am. I'm like, man, I wish I would have known this when I was younger. What I did, I was just too fucking stubborn to listen right. to it. Yeah. I know. I, I, I tried to, um, <laughs> um, speak about the importance of patience in all of this, but um, it's funny because I, if I've been doing this for 17 years, I've been impatient for 15. So you, you know, know it's funny, <laughs> the, the lessons that we always try to convey to our athletes are the lessons that we struggle with the most. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know, like mm-hmm. the we're we're pushing the things on that had a huge impact on us that we had to learn the hard way on and we're making that trying to make that relevant for them. That person could be totally different and may not have those issues, but right. it's. It's good though. Like it just shows like how, I mean, it shows you care. Yeah. But but that's why, that's why, that's why you need a coach. That's why you need a coach. You need a coach. I have a coach. I coach, uh, thousands of people, you know, in, in my shotgun blast kind of way, but I, I, I'm a coach, Mm -hmm. but I have a coach. And so like, I have a CrossFit coach right now. If, and when I do powerlifting again, I'm going to hire you. You're my, you're my powerlifting coach. I have a CrossFit coach. And then, you know, it's like, because, um, because yeah, they they understand it, and you need that person. Accountability. To, yeah, but it, 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 having a coach is cool because I always say like nobody can kick your ass better than somebody not doing the work. The, and you're a coach and athlete, so your self talk and your talk to your athletes are different things. But you know what your athlete is saying to themselves at that time. Yes. And so you know what to yes. say to them, and that's and that's um, having a coach goes a long way. I, I uh, having a plan goes a long way. That's totally. what a coach brings yeah. a, a plan and support. Sorry. No. Yeah. I with my in-person coaching. I feel that I'm able to convey that. Well, um, when I look at someone and I you know they're struggling, I'm like, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Stop whatever. You can just look at them. And you're like, I I've been there. I know what you're doing. And you're then like, the, oh, and then the natural so response of the athlete is like, I'm not feeling fucking sorry. Right. For myself. And Fuck then they're like, how that motherfucker asshole. know I pay you. To, <laughs> right. I fucking pay you to talk shit to me. Right. And then, and then after all the fucking emotions, they're like, yeah, I was feeling yeah. sorry for myself. Mm-hmm. And that, yeah, that, that hyped right. me up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> or like, or that, or when you see someone being acting down, I patronize people often. And I see someone I'm like, Oh, you got a bad, huh? It's rough, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or you, man, I wish I didn't, I was, you're like, I couldn't even deal with your situation. It must yeah. be tough. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then like, I, but again, here I am saying, I convey the things that I struggle with the most. I do this often too. I used, when I was hurt, when I was down, I was like, man, this poor me, man, I got it so bad. This is so fucked up. I got hit. I'm not going to get any money for this. All this shit. All this. And I'm like, well, Derek spent two years in a hospital. Derek Carver spent years in a hospital. Crispy's fucked. Yeah. Like I have friends that have suffered what you've suffered. Like I have friends that have suffered just as hard, if not harder, more than likely harder. And they got through it. So there yeah. was a lot of times where I was feeling down 
and like, man, this is so dumb. I don't even want to be here. Like, what are, what are we doing? And I was like, well, I can only imagine how Derek felt at some point in his life. Sw- shriveling away. That's why I'm on the couch shrinking. Shit, just, in, his, shit in his bed. Right. <laughs> at least I get to go. I get to shit in the toilet. <laughs> shit, I don't even have that. Right. Bad, you know? I get, I, I'm not even stuck in the hospital. I could sit here and smoke pot all day and watch whatever the fuck right. I want. She some hot lieutenant's not wiping my ass for me on the bed. <laughs> well, I mean, I tried to get my wife to, but she wouldn't. <laughs> Jenny's like, listen, that's Jenny's where like, I draw hey, the line. Hey, we draw the line, line here. We'll hire but someone if we need it. She's a saint, though. She, yeah. it, she just said, okay, we'll, we'll get you a better uh, pressure washer in the shower. <laughs> She, she didn't leave me out to dry. She's like, I'm not doing it, but I'll get you something to make oh, this easier. You're right. awesome, Jenny. <laughs> but you know what's cool is you'll never, you'll never, uh, now you know that lesson personally for yourself and you'll yeah. never do that again. And you'll always, now you're, you're always, because of the injuries that you went through, you'll always be better now, which is a cool thing about injuries is like, but they, they, they can make you a better person or they can just fucking break you and ruin your life. And, but you're not the type of person to quit and stuff like that. But a lot of people do let injuries fucking ruin them. And it's okay. Like when you're in the shit, like that first six months, you're in the shit. And so you're going to say shit and think shit and believe shit. But if, if you're, if if, if you're two years post and you're still fucking sucking and not living right. And you're just using that as an excuse. Yeah. That's just, and, and you never, I mean, it's like, the, like the day that you could stand up, you were testing if you could squat again and things like yep. that. And that's just your mentality. And so like this, and so the, like your injury, you, you allowed it to make you better, which is fucking cool. It may not have made me a better athlete, but it's made me a better person. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not a, I'm not a better power lifter now that I got hurt, right. but I'm a better person. And I have a better understanding of things. And to, say, to t- top on that, often I get people that are like, Oh, I can't squat much. Cause I have, a, I hurt my, I have, I have a knee injury. I'm like, tell me about it. Yeah. Oh, 15 years ago, you yeah. fucking had a right. little boo boo, yeah. and you're still hanging on to that yeah. excuse to not achieve things today. Come on, man. I point to you often. I'm like, like, like I got okay, a buddy what, that doesn't have a leg. Do? Yeah. And like, he still squats. Yeah. yeah. It was like, all right, you're, you know, or like you get the people, they just, they tell you one problem, and you're like, oh, okay, well, we can work around that. No, I can't do that. They just like keep on going excuse, on excuse, and excuse. on and on. And right. then you're like, oh, you don't this, want this is just where you're at. Right. Okay. I can't, I can't help you. Because you are not willing to help yourself, you're not you. You don't have you don't have the right mentality here. Like, totally. do you want to fucking go hard, or or is this like a little pity party? Like, don't let your injury don't don't let your injury become a fucking pity don't party. Don't feel sorry like, for yourself. And yeah, right. And um, so like you're you know you're you're back on the horse as well as you can. You're doing new things and stuff. And last week we talked about um, it was cool when you, uh, Owen was saying after he had hurt his back and stuff like that, he, he had tried to uh, work out and things again, but he was trying to do the stuff that he did before right. yeah. the injury. Right. And, and, that, and that fucked yeah. him up even more mentally and physically. So he just didn't work out right. for years. And how common is that? Yeah. Awesome. You know, yeah. like that's the majority. Well, yeah. That's you kind know? of what I'm doing with. Like, yeah. I go back to power lift. Right. And then it just, my body's not there. Mm-hmm. Right. And I'm like, wait, what? I don't, what am I doing? I don't need to be a squat bench and deadlifter. Like I yeah. can do variants of those mm-hmm. to achieve, um, full body strength without actually doing those movements that are hurting me or like your situation is different now you can't totally. you know like you know like it, it's just different it's like and it but it's 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 easier this is easier for me because literally i put my leg on every day so it's like visibly fucking different right but yours yours your guys' stuff is hidden under your skin and things yep. like that you know and yeah. so it's a little bit trickier for you to um maybe remind yourself oh my situation is different now. So my goals need to be in line with my situation. Yeah. I can't, you know, maybe you, maybe you, I don't know if you can squat a thousand pounds. Again. You could squat a thousand pounds when you had not ever separated your quad from your knee. <laughs> like, or and so, and, and, pelvis. and so now it's right. like, what, what, what's the best you can do post injury? Because it's a total new fucking game, right? you know? And, and, and like, I, I'm a big fan proponent and like setting some kind of goal putting a number down like you don't need to write it down but you have a number that you know and like because i know i'll achieve that because i always have and then i know i'll break it so i've what i've done now is like i've set post injury prs or mm-hmm. uh, post injury goals that i want to achieve yeah you know what i mean like it would be great to squat 650 pounds again right yeah like uh I know that's very possible. I, in fact, I could probably do it in a few months. That's of what I. That's why I started powerlifting because when I got my leg cut off before I even got fitted for a leg, I wrote down I wanted to do a 500 pound deadlift. At the time, I didn't know how fucking astronomical that that might that might be a little bit overly ambitious, you know, because like 405 puts me in the top one percent. 
but we got fucking close. You know, and no, like totally. maybe, maybe like we got we got close enough to if the babies came like six it. months later. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah, but um, uh, yeah, those realistic goals. You know, maybe maybe keep them realistic. True, but yeah, that's another thing too. Um, you can only do what your genetic potential allows, right? Like, and we all have different, I think I covered this maybe last episode. We, we talked about a lot off camera, so I'm not sure. But um, you can only do what your genetic potential will allow you to do, right? For example, like I said earlier, like with grit and tenacity, like mm -hmm. you can be as grit and tenacity as possible. If you're fucking uh, just a 130 pound guy, you're probably never going to be a 300 pound guy that yeah. can squat a thousand pounds. Yeah. Right. Right. Like not probably you, you won't, it's just right. not, it's not possible. It's not in the cards for you. So you have to have realistic goals. And so I eat people often that tell me, I want to be the best in the world. And I, I'm looking at a video of them. I'm like, bro, I just don't think this is for you. Yeah. I hate to be it's the like, guy I, to tell you this. Yeah. I would love to be a famous musician. Turns out not a great singer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So I lift weights, you know, like here's, okay, here's what I'm good at. Here's what I'm good at. Here's what I enjoy. What, what, what would I like to accomplish? I would, here? I would love like, to race trophy trucks and, yeah. you know, and NASCAR and things mm -hmm. like that. But 300 pound guys, six mm -hmm. foot fucking one, yep. aren't meant to go in those little tiny cages and to go three, 200 miles yeah. an hour on the track. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? So there's, there's always something that's going to hold you back, you know, on, on certain things in life based off what you can actually achieve. Right. And you just have to be realistic about it and don't be silly. Don't make stupid goals. I get guys who are, come up and they hit, you know, a 500 pound squat or something. And then they're like, how long till you think I hit 600? I'm like, I don't know. What the fuck like talking about? How long? Five years? Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe ten. Maybe yeah, ten. like never. Maybe, maybe or, never. Or yeah. maybe six months. Who knows? Yeah. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know yeah. what your life choices are. I don't know yeah. what you've been doing. Typically, mm -hmm. I don't know what your genetic potential is. Like for me, for example, I went. I went from a six hundred pound squat to a seven hundred fifty pound squat very fast because I had the genetic potential to do so, and then I did the work and everything else that's involved in it. You know, just because you want to do something doesn't necessarily mean you can. Right. And you, you can work as hard as you want at it. We all have limits. We all have ceilings. And that's an almost a reason why I've almost been discouraged. Well, that is the reason why I've been discouraged to come back as a super heavyweight power lifter because now, you know, with the field opening up so big and these guys that are coming in now, there's guys who, jet, Dylan Hellraiser, for example, this kid from Australia, six foot fucking seven, six foot eight, almost 400 pounds, 300 something pounds, just a mammoth of a man. He's been working out for like three years. He's been powerlifting for like a year and a half and he already is totaling what I total. It took me fucking since I was 12 years old of lifting to get to the point where I was at. So, you know, over 15 years, 18 <laughs> years of training to get to a certain level, he did it in a year and a half. So his genetic potential is so much fucking higher. And because of how big he is, his ceiling is so much higher than mine is. So let's say I do everything perfect, right? To come back, Dylan could do shit at 70%. He's going to be better than me. Yeah. Yeah. And let's mm -hmm. say he does everything perfect. I can't achieve that. Yeah. Not possible. And there's more and more guys coming into the fucking sport. And I believe a lot of that is through the exposure of, of Instagram, yeah. which is great. And obviously because more money is getting involved, which is because of the bigger game, bigger guys and things that are coming in. Yeah. I on it, like the numbers that there are today, I seriously think in like five years are going to be dismal. Well, that's how it goes. And how, I, yeah. I'm thinking about, I, I've been thinking about like advancements in the military over the last 50 years. Like that's how it goes. Like the sold, like the, you know, people are like, oh, these these guys are pussies. And I bet it's the same in the powerlifting world, like the old school guys. They like always think it was 70s tough. and 80s. They're like, you don't know about fucking hard training. You don't know about grit. You know, and but <laughs> these guys are like, well, say what you want. We're better. Than, they're like, <laughs> like we're, yeah, be we're better. better. Right. Uh, uh, you guys just did it dumber. Yeah, every, everything is better. Well, this yeah, is another thing, too, I love in social media. Like when these kids talk about powerlifting, like, oh, I wish powerlifting was hardcore like it used to be. I wish it was tougher like it used to be. I'm like, okay, then you wouldn't be involved. Cause you're a bitch. Yeah. Like I'm not even like, kidding. You're yeah. a little bitch. <laughs> like you're literally crying about how you wish it was tough. Like it used to be. Yeah. You're a little bitch. You're go, the problem. Go, go get your fucking bands and go right. home. Go do your little yeah. silly bullshit. Yeah. Get your $200 <laughs> yeah. fucking squat shoes. Yeah. Just your fucking pounds. Yeah. You know, like, uh, so yeah. So you don't want it to be hardcore, sir. And who's to say it was more hardcore back then? What? Cause you heard a fucking story about some Yahoo saying about yeah. my day. Like, ah, shut the fuck up. Yeah. It, it, the time. cleansliness of your weights does not determine the <laughs> athlete. You know? They're super clean yeah, though. Yeah. They're super clean. Like, uh, I love this, uh, especially when I was at my largest, like anytime I'd be anywhere, you know, there's always someone that has a friend or a cousin or a brother or an uncle who's bigger or stronger. I'm like, you don't know, you don't know what I am. What are you talking about? I've had an old timer like, like, Oh, I was twice as big as you when I was your age. I'm like, how old am I? Yeah. How old am I? I was 25 at the time. The guy thought I was fucking in my late 30s. I'm like, yeah. so you don't even know how old I am. Second of all, you were twice as big as me. So you were 12 foot fucking tall? It's not 6'1", <laughs> yeah. dog. 
Wait, you oh, were. I'll just fucking double it, Jenny. Right, right. Like, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like, oh, you're hundred pounds. Yeah. 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 Oh, you're se- you're seven hundred pounds. I'm three fifty, yeah. bro. Like, no, you weren't. No, you weren't twice as big as me. Yeah. Like, it doesn't exist. I was like, and if so. God damn, it was a scary place to be back then oh, because yeah. there was a lot of motherfuckers twice as big as me running around That's apparently right. from all these old timers that I talked to. Land yeah. of giants. Right. Yeah. I'm going to be that guy. <laughs> right. No, but I, I, I always told Jenny, I was like, like it was it was happening regularly that I would like get challenged like in a joking way by old timers, which is funny. But I was told you know, I was like the next time some old timer challenges me, I'm gonna like rip my fucking shirt off, make a big fuss like Hulkamania some, style. Yeah, yeah. Because just that day, some old timer in Home Depot like sees me, he's like, hey, <laughs> like. Like, you want to fight? You know what I mean? And I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> funny. And I continue. I'm like, man, that was my opportunity. I should have, like, yeah, motherfucker, yeah. rip my shirt off. Like, let's Finally. go. Like, yeah. get all crazy. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> right. And uh, I missed the opportunity. But it'll I'm happen. I'm sure there will be another one. Yeah, it'll happen again, and I'll jump on it. <laughs> uh, last week here, we talked about motivation. And 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 we, we tried to, you know, because um, it's common for us to, I, I bet you hear people say to you, like, do, do people ever write you and ask you, be like, hey, man, I, like, I used to be fit. I want to get fit, but my problem is I don't have motivation. Do you hear that? Awesome. Quite a, yeah. So we kind of, we, we've we done it like maybe three times on the podcast now. And mm-hmm. I don't even know how many times I've said it on the internet, but like there's this misunderstanding of what motivation is. You know, people think motivation is waking up and feeling good. They, they think it's like, you know, or just like that's what it is. They think it's feeling good. Um, but we, we kind of, we've explained it a few times where it's like motivation is nothing more than 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 having an idea of who you want to be and what you want to do you know so like there's like and i'm just curious how you respond to that question uh when when people say like i i if somebody writes you and says hey hey man i I was in the army for four years i was i was super fit i really liked myself you know and then i got out and i went to college for a while i got working a job it's been 10 years and I'm, i'm like 30 pounds overweight and i'm just i'm just i have no motivation and that's their question. What? How do you respond to them with that? Challenge them. Um, I typically tell them, uh, no, it's not motivation that you lack. It's dedication. Because um, motivation doesn't mean anything. Like, uh, it's just a word that we throw around to fucking feel good for videos. Like, uh, it's all de- about dedication. So you didn't become less motivated. You became less dedicated to what you wanted to achieve. So how do you become more motivated or something like that or whatever the word that you may be is you need to structure a program and then be dedicated to it or structure a goal and be dedicated to it. Uh, I don't necessarily believe, um, you know, motivation is, it's not a real thing. Like it, <laughs> when, we, we think it's that good feeling yeah. and say in a two, in a one month period of time, we'd be lucky if we have that one day right. where you just wake up and your body feels good and you're like, fuck yes, I'm, I'm literally God's gift to this planet. But the chance one day a year, right? But you're, gonna, <laughs> you're for sure going to capture that moment yeah. on a video and post it. And people are going to think that's you every day. Mm-hmm. Right. Or they capture that one set or that one split moment of that set. Right. When you finish it, you're like, yes, and you're fucking excited. Yeah. You're like, damn, why don't I feel like that when I work out? Like, wait, hold on. Yeah. I was figuring out ways to get out of this set prior to this mentally yeah. in mm-hmm. my head. And I just said, no, you know what? You're don't be a little bitch. You need to be dedicated and you got to fucking do it. And then I did it. Then I felt that. And then that was, can motivate someone to then go and be like, Oh, now I want to go achieve something great or go lift harder. I want to have that moment that Brandon had when he slammed that fucking 800 pound deadlift or you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it, it wasn't motivation that got me to do that. It was dedication that yeah. got me to do that. And then, you know, there are those times that you find the motivation in the beginning of the set where you're excited. And those are rare times. They really Super are Super rare. They're like, but you have to, and, 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 and so this guy asking you the question, you're kind of laughing. Cause you're like <laughs> me too. Right. It's right. literally just how you right. fucking handle that, that everybody has that obstacle in yeah. life daily, multiple times daily. The only thing that separates, the only reason that they're asking us and we're not asking them is because we've answered that question differently. You know, and like with, with you said, dedication, discipline, it's like, you know, if you got to go, uh, you know, f- uh, you, or you say you just got to go hit your workout and you don't feel like it, you go, these people don't go yep. and then they don't go again, again. And, and then they, they, they feel that defeat. Right. So, so now, re- now they're struggling to do the thing and they don't do it. And so double whammy. So but, it's not a lack of motivation. Mm-hmm. It's a lack of dedication. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So these it, people need to find discipline, yeah, find motivation. Yeah, and those are all the word like, and it's and it's almost cliche to throw the words around, but it's like dedication, discipline, fortitude. You know, 
Uh, it's true though. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. what it takes. Intestinal fortitude. That's what we said in the army. Yeah. Testicular in, in, fortitude. In, yeah. Testicular. I'll tougher your balls. <laughs> that hey, that's that, true. That was WWE. Uh, WWF shit. Uh, yeah. New Generation X. Yeah. No. And, and, and I think we're on the same page with that and that, cause that's, it's totally true. And, and, and I mean, in your, say, say you have a 10 week prep. How many days do you think you wake up looking forward to what you have to do that day? Maybe the first one. Yeah. Or I said that we recorded yeah. a podcast last Tuesday and yeah, my training started one. Monday and I was like, and I told, I told Owen, I was like, dude, I felt so good yesterday. Yep. Everything like I was like, and I, and, or everything was just going well. I was super hyped up. And then I, I kept telling myself, I was like, this ain't going to last. Nope. And it, it, and it, and it like, Tuesday comes, like, but I, yeah, but I, but I know <laughs> that and it's like, sore. And, then it's Tuesday, eight hours. <laughs> and then Tuesday it's, it's like, all right, time to enter the suck. Now we're in the suck. Yep. And, and it, and it's not, it's not that it's not too much to ask of a person just to live relatively healthy and fit. What me and you or the the amount of time that we put into fitness, this is our chosen profession vocation. And we don't expect that from other people, but it's relatively easy to live healthy and fit. And like, yeah, just go go do your workout, but have have a plan. Have a plan. Have a coach. So that they so that you you don't need to worry about what you're doing that day. Are your you your coach up? your coach gives you the plan. All you have to do is fucking show up and do that work to your best of your ability that day. And guess what? A lot of days your your hundred percent that day is really like maybe sixty five percent of your full potential. But that's the best you can do that day, right. you know? Perfectly right. perfectly acceptable. It's always gonna be better than sitting on your ass. Yeah, fuck yeah. Every so, time. Every time. Yeah. And so, uh, so yeah, so like, um, and th- so that's how you respond to that question. That's actually exactly how I respond to that question. Then you give them, you get, and then you give them their plan and you talk about their goals and things like that. And that's, that's how, that's how the change happens. Yeah. Some people though, they, and they get unmotivated or undedicated because they, they're looking at the end goal and then not just taking it day by day or taking it rep by rep. Like there's like, if I, when I start prep, I'm like, oh, I'm going to total 2,500, you know, this meet. Like, well, that requires a 1,000-pound squad, a 600-pound mm-hmm. bench, a 900-pound deadlift. And you're like, oh, my God, there's, there's no way. What am I doing? Okay, well, let's pull back a bit. What, which blocks do I need to achieve to get there? Okay, great. So we have to achieve these blocks. Now let's go even smaller. What week? Okay, this week. This is what we have this week. Okay, great. Let's go even better. What do we have to do today? And then if you look at all the shit you got to do today, you're like, oh, fuck, I don't even know. All right, well, let's just do number one. Boom, check it off. Oh, I can do number two. Oh, I can do number three. Boom, next thing you know, that whole day's done. Then fast forward four or five months. Oh, I did everything every single day. Four months ago, I didn't even think it was going to be possible to yeah. achieve all this work. Right. But here we are. Yeah. Did it just by taking it one step at a time. And then you can even go further by taking it just one rep at a time. If I have like a set of eight, you know, with big weight, I'm like, oh my God, there's no way. Well, you know what? I know I can do it for one. Right. Yeah. So let's do one. And, and if I we'll, can do and another we'll one, worry about two. I, I used to have to tell it to you often, yeah. too, especially with squatting when we were testing things. Or do, mm-hmm. I'm like, well, j- to do one, and it goes well, we'll do another one. Okay? Don't think about doing six or eight or whatever the number is. Just think about doing this one. Yep. And then once we achieve this one, then we can achieve the next one. I think that's what a little... Even like, when you're not here, is. I hear your voice in my head when I, you know, it's, uh, uh, so my training... You know, I'm doing like fives by 85% and stuff like that again. And I'm not eating for strength now, so my the weights feel... Whew. Right. They feel heavy, you know, um, and I'll tell you uh, a fun, uh, I liked how you said, just break it down. Don't think about the end goal. Think about, you know, the week and then, you know, think about the day, but now I'm at, uh, and I think the, uh, the, the hierarchy of that, if, if you can think about enjoying every rep and set, or just thinking about that, that's a good place to be. And that's, that's kind of where I'm, I'm at in this prep. And I started doing something weird. I've never like, I've, I've, my self-talk has never been good, you know? Um, but just, I don't know if I'm enjoying the process more now or something but like after most of my sets i've make it a point to say out loud good job Derek." nice it's weird you know <laughs> but it's like but it's like it's like um um it's almost a trick it's like feel feel good about that dude yeah. like feel yeah, good totally. about it's that a little and win and it's not like an egotistical nope. thing or something like that it's way better than saying Worrying about the next set or something like that, you know, or telling yourself you're a pussy because you right. should have done it. Should, yeah. it should have been yeah. heavier. You should have lifted y- faster. You know? And it's like I have a lot of uh, foofy accessory work because they're like working out in the garage is different for me now. And I have this foofy accessory work, and if you know, it says four by twelve glute bridges. I'm like, oh, what are we? What are we? You know, or something? Or like yeah. my warm up, something stupid. I'm just like, good job, Derek. Like, good job, dude. Good job. You got like, through. Good it. job, man. Like On that, the next. Like, uh, start being happy for these small, tiny ass accomplishments because it, like, it's tough for everybody. 
you know? So uh, if you think you're lacking motivation, we're here to tell you you're not. You're just lacking discipline, dedication, intestinal fortitude, and that's okay. And now you know the problem, so we know yeah. how to fix it. Um, step one, hire somebody like Brandon. Get a, get a coach. Get a plan. And actually, that's what, you know, so where can people, if they want if they want to talk to you about coaching and programming and things like that, how do they find you? Instagram is the easiest way to reach me. It's uh, Brandon underscore Allen 88. Um, you just DM me. I typically respond to every single DM, especially if it's fitness related or something that has substance, I'm going to respond. And then uh, we can go from there. Uh, you can also email me at uh, Brandon Allen PT at gmail.com. Um, either of those will work. In, like I said, though, Instagram is going to be the fastest response. If you do hire me as a coach, um, I give you my cell phone number and we actually communicate via text, uh, send in video, all that kind of thing. Um, basically anything you need, I'll get you dialed in for. And if I don't know it, if I can't achieve it, I have the resources to find out. So you will be being taken care of. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, Instagram. Hit me yeah. up on Instagram. Cool. Yeah. And not like, you know, and so, so, and I'll just tell the listeners, like when I have questions of strength or when I want to do power, you're my coach. Like you're my, like I have, I have a couple different coaches for whatever area I want to specialize in. And uh, um, Brandon's my coach. And you, because you, and I, I could, I could hire anybody out there in the world, right. you know? No, nah, I fucking, I've loved working with you, man. You've taught me so much um, over the years and you've helped me grow. And I think, um, you know, I'm in this, I'm in this training cycle now in this, in this competition preparation. And I think what I learned, uh, uh, the, 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 my mental game is so much stronger, like, cause you know, I, I'm stronger than I need to be for CrossFit strength isn't a thing, but what I learned, like the patience I learned working with you and, and, and just like, I'm so fucking dangerous right now. Cause my mental game is there and you helped me a lot with that, man. Sure. So it's like, yeah, uh, Brandon can help you with your numbers and things like that, but it'll make you a better person and athlete. And and that, that pays dividends all yeah. for the rest of your life. You yeah. know, just to touch on the training. Um, I don't only offer powerlifting training. Mind you, I've been, right, yeah. I've been lifting since I was 12 years old. I've been coaching since I was 18. Uh, it's my passion. It's my hobby. I love it. I've played you know, football and everything. So I and, watch you make motherfuckers run sprints yeah, and yeah. battle ropes and yep. the whole fucking nine. And yep, I, yep. and I was curious about that because, um, you know, so you, you're training me, mm -hmm. um, you're training foster. Yep. He's a fucking, he's a, he's a, he's a tough, he's a tough guy. Um, but then you, uh, right after me comes in a fucking 42 year old out of shape female. And you tackle that shit, yep. you know, <laughs> like, that's probably the and majority I was like, of how do you, clientele, how, does, how does he do this? Does it, and, but you know, your shit, yeah. you know, uh, you're not just, uh, uh, um, one trick pony. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, uh, I work with all walks of life, uh, big, small, tall, short. Um, I don't care what you are. I don't care what your goals are. Doesn't care how many legs you have. I don't, no. care how many legs you, got. <laughs> you don't even need I to have, have them. I have a client with only one finger. Uh -huh. I mean, I, you know, I, I seem to be like the powerlifting uh, cripple coach. Yeah. Uh, I coach Casey Mitchell yeah. as well at One Legged Monster. I've helped uh, Derek Carver as well. So, I mean, whatever uh, physical. What he's, the, he's the PT Barnum of powerlifting. <laughs> he just gets all the hairy, limbless rejects. Yeah, you know, it's a he's great got, little yeah, niche. He's, got, he's got a Siamese twin client. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're actually you know, de uh, deadlifting double what they should yeah. be. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, I know. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, any walk of life, any, anything you got, um, I can help you. If I can't, I have the resources to. And I'll be honest, if, I, if you have an unrealistic goal or you have something that I can't help you with, I'll try to point you in the right direction. Yeah. No, oh, that's very true. You were always very honest with me. And I'll be like, hey, I want to do this. And you're like, slow the fuck down. Dude. <laughs> How about you try to survive what I got in store for you today? Right. And then, and and then you know, because like, cause like coming, to, coming up to the meet, I was like, hey, when do I when do I test my max? And you're like, on the platform. At the fucking competition. I was like, ooh. ooh. So I really got to trust you. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's scary. Yeah. I, and but, I struggled with that yeah. when I first had a coach. Yeah. Chad Lissy Smith is my coach. Mm -hmm. I've learned a ton through and uh, continue to learn through. But uh, yeah, I would always think like, is he trying to sabotage me? Because he's another super heavyweight. Like, what, what's going on? Why were we only benching this? I'm way stronger than this. We should be doing this. And I and then same thing. I'm like, well, when when are we going to test? Uh, what I'm going to open with? And he's like, what do you, we, we're not going to. He's like, we're going to do it on the meat day. I'm like, oh shit. Product product <laughs> release is August 29th, That's not it. August 28th. Right, you know? right, like, yeah, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yep. it's a trusting process as well. When yeah. you take when you do hire a coach. 
just put it this way. Do not hire a coach unless you're hundred percent in. Like if you're going to hire a coach, but yeah, I'm going to do what he tells me, but I still have my own ideas on other things I'm going to do. You're not going to get what you, what you want. And then you never gave that coach a fair chance. Then you're going to have a, a misconception on his training. Oh, you're and then they're going to fucking, right. Oh, I, I, I trained leave, with Brandon. I didn't get stronger. Leave or, a bad review. Right. Yep. You know, like, well, you yeah. didn't do what I asked you to do either. Yeah. So we have to ignore that. Yeah. Like, we know, we know, we know what we're, we know, we know what we're talking about because we live it. Yep. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. So cool. That's uh yeah. So I, I, I would say, uh, uh, check out Brandon's Instagram. It's Brandon underscore Allen. And it's A L L E N A L L E N. Just to be clear. Eight, eight. eight, eight. eight. Yep. So, uh, yeah, man. Uh, I think that, uh, is going to conclude our two part interview Yay. with Brandon Allen. Thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Great, great having time. You. Thanks yeah. for having me up. I got fucking stuck, Jenny. I'm fucking, yeah. fucking stuck, <laughs> fucking stuck uh, in there, Jenny. Yeah. The, the fucking baby food exploding mm-hmm. in my pants as well. Yeah. Good mm-hmm. stories. Good mm-hmm. stories, guys. <laughs> yeah. It's funny how, uh, how, um, uh, well, it's, it's funny how funny you are and aloof and things like that. But when you get it, then, then, then you're just like, well, your genetic potential. I'm like, hold the fuck on, dude. <laughs> like I did not sign up for these science. Like the, uh, your, your, um, the, the knowledge you have inside of that dome is man, it's a big head, a, a yeah. lot of room. So lot of room. Uh, I wear a size eight yeah. and a half. Yeah. Hats. Yeah. <laughs> that's my, that's, that's how big my foot is. Um, uh, yeah, no, <laughs> Hey man, thanks. Yeah. It was, a, it was a pleasure having you on. I appreciate you taking the time to come hang out with us. That's going to do it for this episode of Savage Saturdays here on the Drinker Bros Podcast. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs>